Hey guys and welcome back to the channel, and today I'm doing a what if which is, what if Deku, could permanently copy Quirks part 2, I did not make this what if or fanfiction the author of this amazing fanfiction is Kairamaru, please support his work. Chapter 5. Quirk Analysis Part 2, Class Representative. Hey friends and fans, Kairamaru is bringing you the third chapter of Collector Hero, Synthesis. Analysis continues, will Izuku impress his teachers with how he uses Collector? Who will be class representative? So without further delay, please enjoy. Chapter 5 Quirk Analysis Point 2, Class Representative. Can I go next, Midori? Mina asked with a bright grin. I'll go after Mina, if that's cool, Kami spoke up. Uraraka should go after her, Kirishima spoke up, that way all the girls are good and then the rest of us guys can go. Yeah, sure, Mineta nodded, though everyone noticed his eyes roaming, all of the girls glared back at him when their eyes met. Alright then, Ashido we'll start with you, Izuku smiled and got a beaming smile in return as Mina practically bounced up to him. Your acid quirk is very interesting, Mina, Izuku praised the pinket, I assume you've had to build up resistance to your own acids over time. Yeah, I hurt myself a few times growing up by creating stuff that was too strong for me to handle, Mina admitted with a sheepish grin. Then you'll need to keep building up your resistance. The stronger the acids you can make the more versatility you'll have in the field. Also you might want to study up on some chemistry with Momo. If you can freely control which acids you produce you could become invaluable in dozens of situations. As for direct applications I'd recommend focusing your control on both solubility and viscosity. The more control you have over your acid the less likely you are to harm someone by accident. Since it's a liquid you could also increase your effective range by learning to control the tension or pressure of your body, or possibly by making a nozzle with your fingers and palms. With higher resistance, free control, some extra knowledge, and different direct applications during use you'll be an amazing hero, Ashido. Izuku grinned at the pink girl who had white eyes at having so many suggestions given for her quirk. Midori, that's so cool. Mina cheered as she hopped up and down, Izuku politely looked to the side instead of staring at what the jumping was doing to Mina's assets. You're welcome, Ashido, Izuku smiled as Mina skipped over to the other girls that had already had their quirks analyzed, the group began to chat even more with Mina suddenly talking to Momo, the pink had even had her hands in the classic, begging, position, Izuku was fairly certain Mina was asking the resident, genius, for chemistry help. My turn cutie, Kami winked at him with a teasing smile, Izuku flustered for a moment, which made Kami giggle at him, he was so fun to tease, though to be honest she really would like to get his number soon. See Kami, Izuku stumbled for a brief moment at using her first name, but the fawn-haired girl had asked him to, so he'd do so, your glamour quirk is very impressive, it can produce both visual and auditory illusions from what I've gathered. Yep, Kami popped the, P, with a grin, as it appears to be based solely on your breath, I'd recommend breathing exercises. With the level of control you've demonstrated so far in class I'd imagine you can fake voice as well, but what about other sounds? Can you create full-on auditory illusions that could potentially deafen the people under your quirk's effect? What about the other three senses? Can you make tactile illusions? What about olfactory or gustatory illusions? Izuku questioned and Kami raised her hands. Slow down, Midori, take a breath fam, Kami teased and Izuku rubbed the back of his head. As far as I'm aware, my quirk only lets me make visual and auditory illusions, Kami answered though I've never tried to really see how deep into the illusion I could pull someone, the illusion's Yusu ally only linger for less than a minute too. With proper breath control I'm sure you could maintain your illusions for a considerable amount of time, Kami. Izuku encouraged the pretty teen, until you test out whether or not you can add the other three senses to your illusions, you can focus on other aspects, like making more complex illusions, pulling targets deeper into your illusions so they can't fight effectively, and making moves too. Oh, Making moves, huh, what kinds of moves would those be? Kami teased the Verdette as she leaned closer with a saucy grin, seeing his face go tomato red had her giggling again, he was such a cinnamon roll. Wlii was AC Actu ally thinking L like illusionary clones and stuff, Izuku stuttered out. Huh, that would be super lit, Kami remarked as she tapped her pouty lips with her index finger, I could surround enemies all by myself. If your illusions are dispersed by changes to the surroundings you could also try support gear that would, for lack of a better term, 
let your illusions stick to them, it could provide good fallback in case you were fighting a villain whose quirk had area of effect abilities, though I'm curious, how many people can you show your illusions to? Is there a set range? Izuku inquired curiously. Hmm, Yusu ally about 50 meters at most, Kami replied as she took on a cute thinking pose of her own, with her index finger now on her chin and a cute little frown on her lips, though I've been steadily improving it over the years, like, it was only about 5 meters when I first really got it under control. I'd suggest continuing to work on refinement and techniques then, see how thoroughly people can be ensnared by your illusions, try to expand the number of senses you can affect, also work on breathing exercises to keep your illusions up for longer periods of time, Izuku grinned and Kami smiled back. You're, like, totes amazing, Midori, Kami praised him, it's really hot. Izuku's face once again went nuclear red, Kami turned to face Ochako and gently slapped the brunette's hand. Tag in, Chako-chan. Kami grinned and Ochako smiled at the fawn-haired girl. I guess I'm next, Midoriya-kun, Ochako grinned cheerfully. Looks like it, Uraraka-san, Izuku chuckled. Ready whenever you are, Ochako bounced on her heels a bit in anticipation. Your quirk is an emitter type and works based on what you touch with the pads on your fingertips. You seem to have some nausea issues when you use your quirk on yourself. You told me your weight limit is currently 3 tons too. As far as your quirk goes, you'll need to train it to increase the amount of weight you can affect. I'm curious if you could and Evan to ally spread the effect from item to item so long as each item was in contact with the others. Though I believe it would still be capped at your weight limit. As for further developments I'd look into support gear that makes use of tethers or cables that could be attached to things you make weightless, imagine making a car weightless, swinging it around on a tether or cable, like a flail, and then launching it at a rampaging villain, at the last moment before impact, you return the car's weight and the full force strikes the villain all at once. Izuku was off on a muttering spree in his excitement over her quirk and its potential applications. That could be useful, Ochako looked amazed at the potential her quirk could possess even with just a simple support item added to it. She kinda, froze for a moment then, her face paling. Though I'd have to only use it on really durable villains, she poked her fingers together, I, don't think I'd want to see the result if I aimed wrong, her voice steadily got quieter as she went, with Izuku paling as well at the thought, she took a breath and shook her head, trying to go back to, excited, if I could overcome my nausea when using my quirk on myself, I could even use a grappling gun type item to improve my mobility. Her eyes practically sparkled at the thought. On that note you might want to think about having your costume altered a bit to put a bit of pressure on your wrists and neck. There are pressure points there that help with nausea. The biggest cause of your nausea probably has to do with the semicircular canals in your ears. They help regulate balance and when they're disturbed, by a sudden loss of gravity as an example, they'll give you a case of vertigo, you might be able to train that weakness away, but some support gear could also help, medicines such as motion sickness pills could also work, I think, I believe you'll be an excellent hero, Uraraka-san, combat, support, or rescue, you'll be super helpful, Izuku encouraged the brown-eyed girl. Thank you, Midoriya-kun. Ochako beamed at him and Izuku felt his heart thump at how cute she looked. No problem, Uraraka-san, Izuku smiled even as he fought to keep his cheeks from burning, Ochako happily went over to the girls to start discussing ideas, Siro stepped up next and grinned. What are you thinking, Midoriya? Siro asked curiously, is there something I'm missing? Or have I been on the right track? A mutant type with quite a few applications, Izuku began his analysis, I've seen you both fire your tape off and reel it back in, so I believe you already know of its mobility applications, Siro nodded with a grin, how much have you experimented with it? Can you change the type of tape? For example, can you make double-sided tape? What about duct tape? Can you change the tape's color? Can you fire off more than one strand per elbow? I figured out how to make double-sided tape last year act to ally, but it was touch and go for the first few months after I figured it out, I think I can do multiple strands at once, but I haven't really tried before, as for changing the type or color, I've never act to ally tried, Siro responded with a thoughtful look. Well if you can't change the type drastically you have other options, such as altering the thickness of the tape or controlling the adhesiveness. Color may or may not be out of your reach, but it could be good for catching the eye of other heroes in the field. That way they can be alerted to the direction of a fleeing villain that you're in pursuit of, or if you find yourself needing backup, other than that I'd suggest trying to fire multiple strands of tape from each elbow, 
you might even look into firing a single strand but splitting it as you do, you could potentially make a net or barricade in a single shot with proper control, Izuku theorized the different applications of his classmate's quirk. I see what you're saying, Siro nodded as he thought about Izuku's suggestions and analysis, I guess I've got some work ahead of me to see how much control I really have. The black-haired boy looked thoughtfully at his elbows, thanks for the analysis, Midoriya, I'll start practicing with your ideas in mind today. No problem, Siro, Izuku nodded to the other boy, let me know how it works out, it could be that some changes will open up a whole new aspect of your quirk. Will do, Siro grinned as he went to think about his quirk training. Me next, Mineta cried out and Izuku nodded in acceptance to the short boy. Mutant type, the balls you produce have incredible tensile strength and adhesiveness, but from what I've seen, using too many in quick successions could cause damage to your head, can you alter their adhesiveness? Can you make them stronger or weaker? Are you the only thing they don't stick to? Izuku asked a few questions since he'd only gotten to see Mineta's quirk in action once during the assessment test. The stickiness is based on my physical condition, Mineta replied, if I'm in good health, their adhesiveness is maxed, and they last about half a day. Hmm, so no ability to alter any of their other properties. Izuku questioned. Not that I'm aware of, Mineta shook his head, I figure I'll have to focus on capture more than anything. The balls can stick to each other, correct? Have you considered forming them into constructs like chains? Or maybe making a cushion-like shield between yourself and an opponent? Izuku postulated a few ideas. Hmm, I guess that could be possible. Mineta nodded, though I'll bleed a lot to make constructs that are of any real size. You'll need to toughen up your scalp then, I'm afraid the only way to do that is through conditioning training, you'll have to go beyond your current limit and then push even further, mutant types only advance through rigorous physical exertion, Izuku explained. Aw oh man, that's gonna hurt like hell, Mineta grabbed his head in phantom pain. Some support gear that you could link up by attaching the balls to them may help out too, you said you'd probably focus on capture so things like nets, bolos, or tethers could prove useful, Izuku laid out some options for the shorter boy. I'll think on it, Midoriya, thanks for the heads up, Mineta gave thumbs up as he went to talk to Siro about ideas. It would seem that moi I'm up next, monsieur. Aoyama posed as he got Izuku's attention, giving a friendly smile Izuku nodded to the blonde boy. Emitter type, you fire energy from your navel in short but powerful bursts, while it appears in the visible spectrum it isn't just light, you wouldn't receive any recoil if it was massless light, your 50 meter dash during the assessment showed the recoil your beam produces, Izuku commented. We, you are correct, my sparkling laser is a, unique, form of energy rather than simple light, Aoyama nodded, the sparkles can't be stopped. You also mentioned that if you fire it for more than a second, you'll suffer abdominal stress or injury. Your belt also shows the traits of a daily support item meant to keep your quirk from firing accidentally, I won't ask why, that's not my place to pry, but I believe you'll be able to fully control it in the future," Izuku encouraged him. Aoyama's normal smile softened a bit and seemed more genuine in Izuku's eyes for a moment. As for utilizing your quirk, your costume is amazingly well thought out. Incorporating points to redirect your beam to your shoulders and knees gives you a lot more options and was frankly a stroke of genius. As much as you may not like it, emitter-type quirks only develop further by forcing them past their limits. So, you'll have to build up your abdomen with constant usage. You're on the skinny side too, so building up your core might help you control the pain as well. Aoyama grimaced slightly for a moment and looked a little blue in the face. Also, perhaps you could use a bit more refinement of your control to change the nature of your beam. By focusing it down to a thin beam you could make it an effective cutting force. You might want to look into support gear that could store some of your energy for prolonged use, this could, in theory, be a temporary fix for your current time limit, you have the knight motif already, so a shining sword would fit, right? It would even give you melee combat options if you ever ran across a villain that was impervious to blasts, plus this theoretical sword could be used to help free people from rubble or vehicles they're trapped in. Say Mervelu, Monsieur Midoriya, Aoyama exclaimed, his indigo eyes sparkling brightly. I shall become a beacon for those in need of a shining night. My sparkles will never dim with such wonderful ideas. Happy to help, Izuku smiled as the blonde teen practically started sparkling even without his quirk. I'll go next if you'd like, Midoriya, Iida nodded to the verdette. Sure thing Iida, Izuku smiled at the earnest teen, a mutant type, 
Of course, your engines let you rapidly accelerate and maintain high velocity, your legs seem to have undergone natural strengthening because of this, though I believe you've also conditioned them further yourself. Indeed, Ieda nodded with a grin, I plan to use my legs as my main form of offense in the field, therefore it was paramount that I strengthen them as much as possible. Agreed, Izuku nodded, to further your quirk usage I'd suggest consistently upping the time you can spend in top gear, the longer you can maintain max speed and output the further you'll push your quirk, as I told Mineta, mutant type quirks only advance when physically forced past their limits, you may also want to incorporate the most efficient cooling system you can fit into your costume, I believe overheating will stall you out and that could leave you as a liability on the field. Indeed, when I hit maximum output, I can Yusu ally only maintain it for a short 10 second burst, Ieda informed the multi-quirk user, as I further develop my quirk, I hope to be able to not only increase speed but how long I can maintain it as well. Additionally you may want to look into specialized attachments to your costume, Izuku suggested, thrust, when focused to a smaller point, will give you explosive speed and could be used for added mobility if paired with proper support gear, heck, you may even be able to attain short distance flight, that could be useful for getting around obstacles and continuing pursuit of a villain. Yes, I see what you mean, Ieda held his chin as he pondered on Izuku's observations, my speed can be hindered if I have nowhere to run or if a large obstruction blocks my path, limited flight to help deal with such obstacles would be useful. Exactly, Izuku nodded, it could also enable you to make a safe landing if ever you were thrown into the air, or help you reach people trapped in out of the way places that you couldn't normally run to. Thank you for your analysis, Midoriya, I shall look into implementing your ideas in the near future. Ieda thanked while making a chopping motion with his right arm. No problem Ieda, Izuku smiled at the taller team. Until Kirishima returns it seems that I am the last, Midoriya, Takoyami nodded to Izuku. Alright then, let's get started, Izuku offered, I've never act to ally seen a sentient quirk like yours before, so I'm thrilled to be able to analyze it, it seems to be an emitter type, but does it have complete autonomy or are you always in control? Is its range limited? Can it be damaged or destroyed? Dark Shadow has an effective range of about 30 meters but can reach just over 40, its size and shape are semi-malleable, but it mostly retains the same overall form, I've yet to find anything that can truly damage Dark Shadow, so I'm doubtful of its ability to be destroyed outright, as for autonomy it can speak and act to a limited degree without my input, but it becomes less controllable the darker it gets with its strength growing proportionally, Takoyami answered Izuku's questions. I see. That's amazing, I believe you mostly use Dark Shadow for mid to long range combat. Izuku surmised. Indeed, Dark Shadow's strength makes that the best option, Takoyami nodded. If you wanted to gain a better handle on Dark Shadow, I believe you'll need to overcome it in full darkness. But if you always leave combat to Dark Shadow and keep at a distance I worry about your melee and close coup ardor's options, you said Dark Shadow's form was semi-malleable, have you ever considered using it as a cowl? Letting Dark Shadow cover your body would increase your defense and strength while giving you melee options against fast opponents that may be able to avoid Dark Shadow at mid and long range, Izuku theorized. Hmm, you make a good point, Midoriya, Takoyami nodded, I have been a bit over-reliant on Dark Shadow's power, it would be good to take care of the glaring weakness of my close coup ardor's combat, what say you, Dark Shadow? The sentient shadow monster emerged from Takoyami's stomach and looked Izuku over for a moment. He's got a point, the shadow beast commented, I guess I can cover you and keep up your defense while you handle the offense, the sentient quirk shrugged and Izuku almost squealed at how cool it was to see such a unique quirk. Siro, Takoyami, Hagakuri, Mineta, Bakugo, and Yaoyorozu, you're up. All Might called loudly as the second group started approaching the rest of the students, the named students moved over to the three teachers and left Izuku and Todoroki as the only students not to be called yet. Yo, Midoriya, think I can get an analysis? Kirishima asked with a wave. Of course, Kirishima, Izuku agreed. I'm pretty psyched to see what you have to say about my quirk. Kirishima smiled as he hardened his hand and forearm, my quirk isn't exactly amazing or flashy. Your quirk is amazing, Kirishima, you shouldn't doubt it, Izuku shook his head, transformation types are interesting, they advance and develop as a sort of in-between of emitter types and mutant types, your hardening seems to take on a rock or crystalline structure, with training you've probably built that up from only a moderate increase in sturdiness, correct? Yeah, how did you know? Kirishima looked shocked. Most transformation types start out fairly small scale, 
Izuku shrugged with a smile, but I can already tell you're nowhere near your full capabilities, you can push so much farther, in fact, let's try a little experiment. Experiment, Hiroshima questioned, yeah, I think you're much closer to advancing your quirk than you think, Izuku grinned at the red head, you're holding yourself back by doubting your power, Hiroshima, activate your quirk, full body please. Okay, Hiroshima blinked as his body took on a rough, sharp texture, what now? Do it again, Izuku smiled confidently. What? Hiroshima questioned confused. Do it again, force your quirk to activate again, Izuku encouraged him. But my quirk is already active. Hiroshima looked perplexed. Is it? Izuku asked and Hiroshima blinked, are you really using all of it? Yeah, the redhead looked a bit unsure. Then prove it and force it again. Izuku had both of his fists clenched in front of him as he encouraged the other team. Alright, I'll try. Hiroshima roared out as he tried to activate his quirk while maintaining it, he felt a strong resistance, like his body was fully flexed and he was trying to move, he couldn't move past the resistance, this was his limit. More, stronger, denser, more, Izuku almost ordered the other boy, the Verdet was fully caught up in trying to help his classmate that he didn't notice the rest watching them. Ra, Hiroshima forced his quirk past the resistance, he felt like something cracked and then the resistance was gone, he felt heavy but strangely, stronger. Holy crap, Kiri, Mina exclaimed loudly and Kirishima opened his eyes, he noticed everyone looking at him in shock, looking down at his hands he could see why, they looked like claws. His arms seemed jagged and he looked down at his chest to see it looking like jagged, dense rock. Dude, what happened? Kaminari asked in shock, you look crazy tough. I comma I just did what Midoriya told me, Kirishima replied distractedly before he looked up at Izuku. Congratulations Kirishima, Izuku smiled brightly, your quirk just advanced. This is hard to maintain, Kirishima mentioned and just like that his quirk deactivated, the redhead stumbled slightly and Izuku caught his arm, that takes a lot out of me. You just developed it, Izuku grinned happily, it'll take a while until you can use it just as easily as you use the current level, you just need practice and training. Thanks Midoriya, I can't believe I was able to go so much further, Kirishima smiled, I was so close and didn't even know it. You just needed to stop doubting yourself and your quirk, Kirishima, Izuku waved off the thanks, sometimes we're our own worst enemy, Kirishima looked at Izuku's face when he heard that, he saw the same look in the Verdet's eyes that he'd seen in his own in the mirror, back when he almost lost his drive to be a hero. I feel that, bro, Kirishima nodded to the Verdet as he stood up straight. Yeah, Izuku gave a lopsided smile, but we have to move beyond the past if we want to be heroes, right? Heck yeah, Kirishima fist bumped Izuku while everybody came over to congratulate Kirishima on his new development. Todoroki, Midoriya, you're up, All Might called out and Izuku started, looking over and seeing the third group returning he realized how long he'd been helping Kirishima, jogging over to the three teachers Izuku and Todoroki awaited instruction. Alright students, we'll be going over how you use your quirks currently and seeing if we can't find new ways to implement them. All Might explained. Midoriya, you're up first, Aizawa explained, show us a new application of your quirk, with how your quirk works you should have plenty of abilities that aren't just making a bigger blast. Yes sir, Izuku nodded, the Verdet didn't move but the teachers did as they suddenly jerked and started to look around, Todoroki quirked an eyebrow at the strange behavior of the teachers, Izuku simply walked behind the teachers and Todoroki watched as Aizawa's hair began to float as the man's eyes glowed red, several seconds later all three teachers seemed to get their heads back on straight. Midoriya, Smintos questioned when he didn't see the Verdet student. Right here, Sensei, Izuku called out from behind them. What was that young Midoriya? All Might asked seemingly shaken. A quirk I got from a man in Tokyo, it's a shame he was too scared to be a hero, his quirk is amazing, Izuku lamented. That's a trump card quirk of mine, it's called, total sensory deprivation, and, well you experienced what it can do. A complete sensory void, Aizawa remarked, all five senses shut off entirely in an instant, I'm guessing it's a, psychic, subtype. Yes, sensei, Izuku confirmed. That was an, unsettling experience, Smintos commented, but it was incredibly effective for subduing people. Indeed, young Midoriya, an excellent non-combative use of your quirk. All Might praised the team, Izuku almost squealed at getting a compliment from his idol. Todoroki, show us what you can do, Smintos instructed, 
The dual-haired student nodded and unleashed a huge wave of ice in a wave in front of him. That's what you've been doing since the first day, Aizawa looked at the team with a glare, his eyes turned red as his quirk activated, I told you you'll have to give it your all if you want to remain in the hero course. I don't need to use fire, Todoroki stated dully. Do you want to be expelled? Aizawa questioned the team, if you won't give it your all you don't belong in the hero course, use your fire and show us what you can do, that or you can leave. I won't use his quirk, Todoroki ground out, his fists clenched at his sides. Young Midoriya, returned to the rest of the students, All Might instructed and Izuku saw the seriousness in the symbol of peace's eyes. Yes, sensei, Izuku bowed and jogged back to the rest of class as all three teachers gathered around Todoroki, he didn't know what that was about, but to see someone outright reject what seemed to be half of their own quirk was odd, it wasn't his place to pry though. The next day, you all need to decide on something today, Aizawa stated seriously, something that'll affect your entire class going forward, all of the students tensed up, expecting another threat of expulsion, you need to choose your class representatives. That's so normal, almost the entire class exclaimed. I wasn't done, Aizawa's eyes went red and his hair floated upwards as he glared at his students. There was an instant silence from the teens, as I was saying, whoever you pick will become the de facto leaders of your class, so choose carefully. There was an instant clamoring from the students as almost everyone raised their hands and called out that they wanted to do it, after a few moments of no one being able to hear over the other someone finally got everyone's attention, that person also happened to be raising their hand the highest of anyone. People please, Ieda called and everyone Evan to ally gave him their attention, desire doesn't equal eight to ability. This office requires someone that everyone can put their trust in. But we've only known each other for about a week, that's not a lot of time to build trust, Suyu spoke up, Ieda looked like he was about to say something, but someone else spoke up before him. Ieda is correct though, Momo spoke up, whoever leads the class should have everyone's trust, they should be chosen by at least the majority of the class. I vote for Midoriya, Kami smiled as she sent the Verdetta wink, he's already helping everyone in class without asking for anything in return. I vote for Midoriya-kun too, Ochako smiled brightly. Hold on, Ieda exclaimed, if we are going to elect our representatives then we should do it formally. Aizawa-sensei, will you allow this? Do whatever, just hurry up, Aizawa answered from his yellow sleeping bag, all the students sweat dropped at seeing their homeroom teacher already dozing off. Over the next several minutes the class wrote their votes onto slips of paper and placed them in a box that Ieda brought around, when the glasses wearing team counted up all of them and wrote the totals beside the corresponding names it was to a surprising result for some. Why the hell did so many of you vote for the shitty leech? Bakugo, predictably, exploded at the results. E8 votes, Izuku stared at the number stunned, the student with the next highest number was Momo at 3 votes. So, your representative is Midoriya and your vice representative is Yaoyorozu, Aizawa spoke up as the Verdet and Ravenet stood in front of the class, Izuku was trying not to fidget while Momo smiled slightly. I'll do my best guys, to be worthy of the trust you placed in me, Izuku bowed to the class, he saw a few of his classmates start clapping and wondered who besides Kami and Ochak O had voted for him, maybe he could ask at lunch. End chapter. More analysis. Also Kirishima has some help getting over his self-doubt earlier. Unbreakable unlocked, sort of, he can't really move while using it just yet, he'll have to practice with it to get better, more ideas in Izuku shows the teachers that he's not just about power in combat. He has a plethora of quirks, and all sorts of ideas about how to use them. Also, he's class rep, will he stay in the position this time? Who were the 8 people that voted for him? Keep reading to find out. Until I get your reviews, later. Chapter 6. Incident and Practice. Hey friends and fans, Kairamaru is bringing you the third chapter of Collector Hero, Synthesis. Lunch and an incident, some practice between students. So without further delay, please enjoy. Chapter 6 Incident and Practice. What in the world, Izuku blinked as he saw the crowd of reporters gathered in front of you, A, at the gate, there had to be a crew from every news station in the Tokyo metropolitan area. Even a few from outside of Tokyo too. What's it like to have All Might as a teacher? A reporter asked as soon as they caught sight of Izuku, the Verdet was immediately flustered by having a microphone shoved into his face. What? Izuku blinked at being put on the spot. Get the hell out of my way. Bakugo's loud voice could be heard from a different part of the crowd. 
Izuku noticed other students being crowded by the mass of reporters as well. Ochako, Jiro, Mina, and Toru were practically back to back, Sato and Shoji could be seen near the edge, both of the taller teens with mics being shoved in their faces too. He also noticed a few other students being swarmed too, an Oranget girl and a Verdet girl, a black-haired boy wearing a headband, and a blonde teen who seemed to be enjoying the attention he was getting, Izuku presumed these must be some of the students from 1B. What do you think you're doing? A loud, growling voice barked out at the group of reporters, several of the students let out sighs of relief as Hound Dog the U, A, counselor showed up, you're interfering with our students' ability to get to school. Cease this harassment of our students and leave the premises or the police will be called. We just want to know about All Might. A reporter yelled back. All Might isn't available for interviews today, so leave, Aizawa stated while walking up to the gate with present Mike. Why should we listen to such a shabby looking man? A different reporter demanded, Aizawa just exhaled heavily, this is why he hated the media. You know, they're causing such a ruckus, they're almost like villains, present Mike whispered to Aizawa, can't we just beat them up? Not unless you want your reputation dragged through the mud, Aizawa shook his head, let's just wait for the police. While Aizawa and Present Mike kept the reporter's attention, Hound Dog ushered the students past the gate so they could get to class. Izuku calmed down from the surprise of a reporter ambush as he walked to class, one reporter had gotten too impatient and tried to cross the gate after the last of the students had entered, she was met with U, A, S security system, also known as the U, A, barrier, as the massive steel gate slammed into place, with over a meter of reinforced steel between them and any form of All Might interview, the multitudes of reporters had no choice but to complain and wait. Minus 1A classroom, man, those reporters were, like, so twisted, Kami pouted as the class chatted before homeroom, get a clue, right? You said it, Jiro shook her head, didn't expect to get hounded for an interview about All Might this morning. They shouted so many questions at me, I couldn't get a word in anyway, Sato scratched his cheek. I'm glad the teachers showed up when they did, Hiro, Suyu smiled softly. Yeah, it was getting to be a bit much, Ochako messed with her hair. Take your seats, home room is about to start, Aizawa announced as he entered the classroom, they all rushed to comply before he started glaring at them with his quirk. Lunch, please make the numbers stop, Mina whined as they all went through the lunch line, they'd all just finished math class with ectoplasm and several of them were just done. My head hurts. Kaminari agreed with the pinket, are we sure this is high school math? I think ectoplasm has us doing university level stuff. Not to mention that we already have homework for both English and classical Japanese, Kami pouted as they all started to pick out seats, seriously, chill on the workload, am I right? Totally agree, Toru groaned, the invisible girl's shoulders slumping as she sat down, homework every class is going to kill me. The students all started to eat. The delicious food went a long way to soothing their woes, Lunch Rush knew exactly how to make comfort food, even from standard ingredients, the pro could whip up a meal that would leave anyone smiling. Even the rice is super tasty. Ochako sighed happily as she ate, she was sitting between Izuku and Suyu. I couldn't agree more, Lunch Rush is a truly wonderful chef, Momo smiled as she enjoyed her meal, after finishing her next bite of food, the creation quirk user asked a question, I must admit, I'm curious as to who voted for whom as the class representative, would anyone be willing to indulge my curiosity? I voted for Midoriya Kun. He's been super helpful ever since I met him, especially back at the entrance exam, Ochako couldn't stop her giggles seeing Izuku's face go red. Indeed, your willingness to help others and your decisive actions in the battle trial are admirable, that's why I voted for you, Iida nodded to Izuku. I voted for Yaomomo, even with Mineta being a dead weight she still won her battle trial, not to mention we all know she's easily the smartest in our class, Jiro smiled at the Ravenet, she got a beaming smile from the Momo in return. Me too, Momo has been awesome, she even agreed to help me with chemistry so I can try and implement some of Midori's suggestions. Mina grinned at both of them. Mina-san, Jiro-san. Momo seemed to sparkle as she smiled happily. I'll do my best to live up to your expectations. Thank you for your trust. I don't understand something, Ochako turned to face Iida, didn't you really want to become class rep, Iida? You've definitely got the, look, for it down. I don't think she thought that through all the way, Izuku glanced between Ochako and Iida, the brunette was happily eating while Iida seemed to have little reaction to her comment. 
ambition and suitability are different, Ieda shook his head as he explained. I made the choice I felt would be the best, the admiration I hold for my brother is what inspired me to become a hero. However, I realized over the last few days that I'm not ready to be a leader like him yet, that is something I'll have to work on, Midoriya outperformed us all in the entrance exams, going on to break the old record and doing so in a manner befitting a hero, he's also been incredibly supportive of the rest of us, freely offering his analytical skills and suggestions to us all, I aspire to match his example as a hero too. Ieda, Izuku was shocked, he'd never received such outstanding praise from a classmate before, let alone a hero course student. He was truly touched by Ida's words. I totally get that, Toru laughed, that's why I voted for Midori too. He's super nice, he helps us out, and he even healed my feet as good as new. Thanks, you guys, Izuku smiled at all of them, he was so moved by how supportive his classmates were. You know I voted for Midoriya, he's super strong, super helpful, and super cute too, Kami put her arm around his shoulders and pulled him into a side hug, Izuku's face almost went nuclear. Several people would swear they saw steam coming from the top of his head. Speaking of the record breaking that Ieda san mentioned, I'm quite curious about the regular entrance exams, the more I hear about it the more I'm certain that the recommended students must have had an entirely different test, Momo looked thoughtful before taking another bite of her lunch. I thought it was pretty fun. We had to rack up points by destroying robots. Mina exclaimed brightly, they even had this giant robot called a zero pointer. But we weren't meant to fight that one, it was supposed to just be a gimmick that we had to avoid. Not supposed to, but we could, right Midoriya? Ochako smiled at the verdette, her cheeks slightly darker than normal. W well, I just didn't want you to get hurt Uraraka-san, Izuku's cheeks had barely cooled from Kami's hug and now they were right back to red, it's what a hero would do, right? Yeah, you were really cool too, Ochako smiled at him, Izuku smiled back and they both had bright red faces. They're so cute, Mina whispered to Toru, the invisible girl muffling her own giggles as she agreed. Huh, that kind of exam favors combat-oriented quirks more so than any other type, Momo said, before frowning slightly, several quirks, though powerful, wouldn't be of much use against machines. She's got a point, Toru chimed in, I had to figure out that the robots had, off, switches on their bodies. I wasted the first minute and a half of the test trying to figure out how to take down the first robot I found. But you're here with us now, so you did great!" Mina exclaimed raising her hand for a high five and getting one from the invisible girl. So, Midoriya saved you, Hachako-chan. Kami teased the brunette who blushed and nodded, she looked down at her food with bright pink cheeks. Ooh, how did he save you, Ochako? Mina asked with a grin, did he take a hit for you? Or did he save you from a robot you didn't see coming? I it wasn't th that big of a deal, Izuku was also looking down at his food now in a futile effort to hide his own embarrassed face. He pulled me out of the rubble the zero pointer caused. Ochako looked up with sparkling eyes, then he carried me to safety while healing my broken ankle, her cheeks were pink as she told them about that part, then he sets me down and tells me to keep running, that he's going to stop it from getting close to any of the other examinees, then he cut the zero pointer in half with a giant, super hot, blade of air. All eyes turned to face Izuku at that, Ieda was one of the only ones that didn't, as he had witnessed the event firsthand, Izuku saw the shocked and impressed looks of his classmates and didn't know how to react. You cut that giant thing in half, Kami exclaimed in shock. Midori, that's crazy, Mina blinked at him, wow, Toru sounded just as shocked as everyone else looked. I wasn't sure that would happen though, Izuku shook his head, I compiled too many quirks together too, so I ended up hurting myself, I barely had enough energy left to heal up my arm, then I fell unconscious on, on, he couldn't finish the thought and a side glance at Ochako revealed that the gravity girl was also blushing. On my lap, Ochako mumbled as she caught his eyes and gave him a soft smile, Izuku felt better immediately upon seeing it, Ochako clearly didn't mind what had happened and was letting him know. Oh my, Momo's cheeks were a bright pink now too. That's Actu ally adorable, Jiro grinned at the two of them. So cute, Mina and Toru cooed in unison. Is that why you two seem close already, Kiro? Suyu asked bluntly, her index finger on her chin as she looked at Ochako and Izuku next to her. Wh what, and no, I, it's not, Ochako was so flustered she couldn't form words, Izuku wasn't much better as he kept trying to speak but no words came out. 
Hmm, Kami had a mischievous grin on her lips, looks like you're ahead of the rest of us, Chako-chan, Ochako hide her face in her hands, barely avoiding using her quirk and sending herself floating off, hey Midoriya-kun, you can rest your head on my lap next, okay. The fawn-haired girl winked at him while gently patting her left thigh. Izuku felt himself get almost lightheaded from how hot his face was getting. M maybe a change of topic for a bit? Momo questioned and all of the girls agreed, though much giggling took place first. Just as conversation shifted to a new topic the group was interrupted by the blaring of an alarm. Everyone in the lunchroom was startled by the sudden noise, those with sensitive ears or quirks that amplified their sense of hearing like Jiro clapped their hands over their ears with cries of pain and shock. A loud, mechanical voice started blasting over the loudspeaker a second later, attention. Security level 3 has been broken. All students must evacuate in an orderly fashion. The message proceeded to loop after that as the cafeteria quickly descended into panic. What's security level 3? Ieda yelled to an upperclassman as they stood up. It means someone has infiltrated the building. This has never happened in the three years I've been here. Hurry up and get out. The older teen yelled back as he ran. OWW, back off. Mina yelled as an elbow jabbed into her side. The tide of rushing students had swept up their group. In the chaos Izuku had instinctively grabbed onto the closest of his classmates, in this case he'd grabbed Suyu and Momo's hands and pulled them near the wall to avoid the crowd a bit. Stay together guys, Ochako tried to yell over the noise. Hey, Jiro yelled as she was shoved to the side and into Toru. People are going to get hurt if this keeps up. Kami yelled as she pushed against the crowd with Mina at her side. Ieda had been shoved against the glass, but this let him see outside. The glasses wearing teen gaped when he saw the reporters from this morning on the campus grounds. He saw several people rushing towards the incoming reporters, teachers he realized a second later, if the teachers are dealing with the press, then there's no one to turn off the alarm. Everyone will keep panicking unless they're told. But even as he thought this, he had no idea how to convey it to the panicking crowd of students, he was about to try to yell something, anything to get some attention, when a sudden feeling of calm pervaded his mind. Midoriya-chan, Suyu croaked out as Izuku's eyes glowed with a blue light. Empathic force, emotional shift, amplification, efficiency, Izuku compiled and activated these four quirks to bring the chaos to an end. Emotional shift let Izuku freely control his own emotions, a useful quirk he'd copied from a woman Kansai, right now he was setting his emotional state to calm, in preparation for his next move. Empathic force allowed Izuku to force his current emotional state on one person that he designated, he'd copied it during his first foray into asking people online about copying their quirks for his future hero career. Boosting the effect of empathic force to incorporate everyone in the cafeteria with both amplification and efficiency was the fastest way to end the developing stampede, as the panic and chaos was replaced by the enforced calm. The noise quieted down and people stopped moving, everyone simply stood where they were, completely calm and even moving away from each other so that no one was being crushed or shoved anymore. Midoriya-kun, the press is trespassing on the campus. Ieda calmly informed everyone, in this calm state he only barely raised his voice, just enough so that Izuku was able to hear him. Splitting his focus further, something that Izuku had only a bit of experience with considering that he only occasionally multitasked, he activated two more quirks, amplifier, and soothing voice, were the quirks of choice. Everyone, please remain calm, Izuku spoke in a loud, yet very soothing tone, the reporters from this morning seem to have made their way onto the campus, the teachers are dealing with it now, please walk to your designated evacuation point so that the staff knows your location, once this is done, we can all return to our normal school day. The reporters, was the confused statement that followed as Izuku released his multiple quirks. The blue glow left his eyes and the verdette exhaled heavily, even boosting, empathic force, so that it could affect multiple targets didn't change the fact that it required the same amount of energy for each person. There were at least 300 students in the cafeteria at the moment, Izuku had just drained himself of more energy than his mostly eaten lunch would provide, if they still had heroics classes today, he might be in for a rough time. Midoriya, are you okay? Suyu questioned at seeing his tired eyes. I'm fine, that just took a good amount of energy. Izuku smiled at the frog-like girl, Suyu smiled back with a small hint of pink on her cheeks. Was that another quirk, Midoriya-san? Momo asked him softly. Six of them, technically, Izuku chuckled lightly, 
but, empathic force, is an energy drain, especially when boosted, soothing voice, and, amplifier, make a good combination though. Let's walk and talk, Momo suggested with a smile as she and Suyu walked with Izuku, class 1A made it to their designated evacuation spot without trouble, almost everyone in the class was praising Izuku for his quick thinking and for taking charge of the emergency situation, it wasn't until Mina had pointed it out that Izuku, Suyu, and Momo realized they hadn't let go of each other's hands yet, with bright red cheeks all around, the three let go and tried to ignore the awkwardness. You're all here, good work, Aizawa spoke up a minute later when he rounded the corner, Midoriya, Principal Nezu wants to see you after school today. Uh, yes sensei, Izuku nodded, can I ask why? Lunch Rush saw what you did during the emergency and how you kept the situation under control, he told Nezu and the principal wants to personally thank you, Aizawa informed his class's representative. Yes, sensei, Izuku couldn't stop the small happy smile that formed on his face, the principal was giving him personal recognition for his actions. He couldn't wait to tell his parents tonight. Now that the police are dealing with the vultures, we can resume our normal school activities. Aizawa informed the class as he led them back to their classroom, what they didn't need to know was that the U, A, barrier had been destroyed, turned to dust somehow and with none of the reporters having a quirk capable of that, Nezu already had power loader analyzing the remains of the gate, the chimera-like principal was currently overseeing the removal and arrests of several of the reporters, the police captain that had arrived was taking down the statements of the pro-hero and principal. Heroics class, alright, today we'll be working on a common combat scenario that heroes often find themselves in. All Might spoke to the students of 1A, that is being outnumbered. Many times villains will work in groups to pull off crimes. A hero must be prepared to face down multiple opponents alone if the situation calls for it. This led to quite a bit of chatting and whispers among the class, some were excited, others not so much, Izuku could already feel Bakugo glaring at the back of his head, the ash blonde clearly wanted another shot at him. Now, do we have any volunteers to be the first hero? All Might asked, immediately multiple hands shot up, Bakugo, Kirishima, Momo, Iida, Izuku, Sato, Takoyami, Shoji, and Mina all had their hands raised. Alright then, let's have young Yaoyorozu go first. All Might selected, much to the grumbling Bakugo's annoyance. Yes, Sensei, Momo stepped forward, she was still using her current hero costume since Izuku's redesign wouldn't be complete for a bit longer, Mineta was quietly enjoying the visuals, trying not to attract attention and be called out for it. Now for your opponents, All Might looked over the group of students. Let's have young Siro, young Aoyama, and young Mineta. The three boys stepped up and stood across from Momo, the rest of the class stepped back and All Might explained the rules of the bout, this match will be decided by capture or time limit, if young Yaoyorozu is restrained and unable to move, you three win, if all three of you are rendered unable to move or if five minutes pass, then she wins, do you understand the exercise? Yes, sensei, all four acknowledged, all right, begin, all might yelled as he leapt backwards to give the students space. Momo instantly created a staff from her arm, with it a spin she, caught, three of Mineta's purple balls on the staff, she leapt to the side to dodge Aoyama's laser, then had to demonstrate her flexibility by bending backwards to avoid a shot of Siro's tape, not wanting to give three ranged fighters space to work with Momo dashed forward. She created a net from her stomach and tossed it at the backpedaling Mineta. The, pop off, user threw his balls at the net but didn't stop it from covering him and sticking the net to the ground, Mineta realized his quirk had been turned against him when he couldn't force the net off, his ball stuck to everything but him, now they'd stuck the net to the ground and Mineta wasn't able to remove them once they'd stuck to something. He also didn't have anywhere near the strength needed to tear the net. Holy crap she's fast, Siro commented as he and Aoyama split up to try and pincer Momo. We, but not as fast as my sparkles. Aoyama called out as he fired his laser at Momo, the ravenette dodged and her hand glowed with her quirk, a few seconds later and a canister rolled along the ground, with a hiss the canister erupted into a thick white smoke that obscured Siro and Aoyama's vision. Crap, Siro yelled, where'd she go? I don't know, Aoyama called back. Dude, back to back. Siro instructed and Aoyama obliged, the two covered each other's back as they waited for the smoke to clear, Siro aimed his elbows while Aoyama prepared his laser. From the smoke a long object emerged, Siro hit it with his tape only to find it was Momo's staff. It still had Mineta's pop-off balls on it even, 
Momo leapt from the smoke and grabbed her staff, with a heave she tossed Ido her left, it took Siro a split second to realize his tape was still attached to the staff and connected to his elbows, he detached the tape from himself, but the damage was done, Aoyama was taped to the ground and the purple balls on the staff were stuck to him, the blonde was unable to fire off his laser with the staff sitting against the focusing belt. Oh crap, Siro exclaimed as he jumped back to avoid Momo's newly created staff. He fired tape at Momo only for the recommendation student to swat it aside with her staff. Got you, he cheered as he yanked the staff out of Momo's hands. His triumph was short-lived though, Momo had already made everything she needed while under the cover of smoke, a single-shot riot gun was pulled from behind Momo's back, having been secured to the dictionary on her lower back, with a pull of the trigger and a sound of compressed gas, Siro doubled over as the large rubber, bullet, slammed into his stomach, he hit his knees as he hacked and wheezed, trying to get back the breath that had been knocked out of him. Surrender, Momo spoke as she held a third staff to Siro's neck. Exercise over, All Might called out, Yaoyorozu wins. Momo withdrew her staff and heard the cheers and applause from some of her classmates. Checking to make sure Siro wasn't injured more than she intended, the tape quirk user waved her off. He'd be fine, though he was definitely going to recovery girl after class, the bruise this would leave was going to take days if not a week to heal otherwise, Momo made a box cutter to free Aoyama from the tape and help the blonde to his feet, on the way back to the class she also cut the net trapping Mineta, the short boy crawled out of the net and walked back to the class with the other three. Excellent work you four, All Might praised them with his signature smile, congratulations to you young Yaoyorozu, a most excellent match. Thank you, Sensei, Momo bowed with a smile. You made excellent use of both your quirk and your opponent's quirks. All Might nodded to the girl, that's the kind of thinking and resourcefulness that will take you far in the hero field. I was just using what I knew of their quirks beforehand, Momo replied, I learned the value of being able to quickly analyze a person's quirk firsthand, the Ravenette glanced at Izuku, the Verdette smiled brightly at her and Momo felt her cheeks heat up slightly. You applied it very well. All Might nodded to her. Thank you, sir. Momo bowed again before returning to the class. Now then, let's have young Midoriya as the hero, with young Sato, young Yutsushimi, and young Iida as the villains. All Might instructed and the four stepped forwards. Go easy on me, okay Midoriya. Kami winked at him, Izuku stilled his heart, which had just tried to speed up rapidly, and shook his head at the fawn-haired girl. Begin. All Might called and the match began. Hey Midoriya. Sato called out as Kami skipped back to make some distance and Iida ran to cover Izuku's back, I took your advice and tried out a few things. With that the brunette teen pulled a container off his belt and dumped the contents into his mouth, Sato's body bulked up slightly and he charged at Izuku headfirst. Physicality boost, efficiency, enhance function, kinetic boost, durability up, force multiplier, Izuku rapidly compiled his, melee combat, combination and met Sato head on. He dodged Sato's fist and landed a punch to the larger teen's chest, Sato barely budged however, Izuku blinked, knowing that combination let him punch through the villain robots at the entrance exam. Sanding sugar, turns out it ups my durability quite a bit with the same ratio of strength I gained from granulated sugar, Sato chuckled as he wrapped Izuku in a bear hug, I got him. Sorry about this, Sato, Izuku apologized as he grabbed Sato's side, air compression, amplification, force projection, quirk nullification. A blast of air sent Sato onto his ass, his arms let go of Izuku as he hacked and gasped, he didn't understand, how did he get hit this hard? He still had plenty of time. Sato, Iida came blitzing in with a kick aimed at Izuku. Reverse force, took effect with a thought, Iida came to a sudden stop, just hanging in the air for a split second, then he was launched backwards with the same force he'd come at Izuku with, the white armored hero course student went tumbling backwards along the ground at speed. Rog, Sato had retaken his feet and launched a haymaker towards Izuku's head, reverse force, activated and Sato was hit with the force of his own attack, the brunette was knocked flat on his ass. Izuku staggered as an unseen kick slammed into his ribs, even with, durability up, active he still felt the kick, another blow came, this one aimed at his legs and Izuku stumbled. She's using illusions to hide herself. Izuku quickly deduced as he looked around. Iida was getting up, as was Sato again, so he didn't have time to play cat and mouse with Kami, and, air cannon, combination struck the ground, sending dust and dirt into the air, 
It also blew away the rainbow-hued mist of Kami's quirk revealing her staggering back from the unexpected blast. Izuku capitalized on Kami's unsteadiness and sent her back with another air blast. The fawn-haired girl Actualai rolled with the blast and came to a stop in a kneeling position. Iida and Sato were both closing in so Izuku jumped backwards with his increased strength from his active quirks. For what he was about to do he needed to be able to see both Sato and Iida. The two were quick to follow him and Izuku let them get close. When they were close enough Izuku hit them with a combination he'd wanted to try out for a while. Reverse force, took effect, both teams freezing momentarily in their charge, before they were hit with their own force, Izuku activated another quirk as he looked into their eyes, paralyzed glare, activated and Izuku's green eyes turned a bright yellow, both Iida and Sato found their bodies unresponsive as they were launched backwards by Izuku's quirk, the duo ragdolled through the air and landed in a heap from the combination of quirks. Now where did Kami go? Izuku looked around and started slightly when no less than 8 Kamis were coming at him, I see you took my advice. Yep, all 8 Kamis called out in unison, Izuku blasted them all with a widespread air blast, spreading it out weakened the force quite a bit, but it would ensure that all of Kami's glamour was blown away. What the, Izuku blinked in shock when all 8 Kami vanished, where, he didn't get a chance to finish his thought as he was put in a chokehold from behind. Got you, Kami breathed into his ear, Izuku would have gone catatonic from having Kami's impressive breasts pressed against his back in any other situation. But the sudden lack of air was making that difficult. He grabbed Kami's arm and nullified her quirk as a precautionary measure. With his enhanced strength he was able to pry her arm off his neck and spin around. Kami was full of surprises though as she leapt upwards, her hands held his right wrist while her legs crossed over his arm. Izuku and Kami both hit the ground. Kami had Izuku in a textbook perfect arm bar, once again, Izuku would have been a blushing mess realizing where his arm was and what it was pressing against, but the situation demanded more focus. You can't hold me down, Izuku grunted as his increased strength began to lift Kami off the ground, the brown-eyed girl flexed her body and Izuku's arm was pulled straight again. Tap out or I'll break it, Kami threatened, Sato, Iida, give me a hand, she called out to her teammates, Izuku couldn't move his head to check but he wasn't sure if, paralyzed glare, would have worn off yet, had it already been a minute. How about I take you out first? Izuku grunted as he raised his left hand. A sickening snap was heard as Kami overextended Izuku's elbow and the joint broke, Izuku immediately used, emotional shift, to force himself to remain calm and in control of himself, the pain was still there, of course, but for now he could deal with it, well, my arm's already broken anyway. Izuku thought to himself as he focused on his raised left hand, Kami's eyes widened as she only saw Izuku's fingers unclench and then she was blasted with an, air cannon, point blank. Kami coughed and struggled to get up from the blast, she made it to her feet only to see Izuku also standing, she'd broken his elbow and Izuku's right arm hung limply, the cuts and bruising was from him blasting his own arm with his, air cannon. Izuku noticed Sato and Iida approaching their position, Neither boy was rushing them though, they'd obviously learned that charges like that would be turned against them, when all three of his opponents stood across from him Izuku's condition worried Iida and Sato. Dude, Midoriya, your arm isn't looking so good, Sato commented staring at the broken and bruised limb. Midoriya, we should stop the exercise immediately and get you to recovery girl. Iida chopped the air and Izuku could hear the worry and concern in the other team's voice. No need. Izuku smiled at them, healing aura, amplification, enhance function. With a green glow flaring around his arm Izuku sighed in relief, Iida, Sato, and Kami watched on in a mixture of relief, shock, and a small bit of fear as Izuku's elbow was restored and all his cuts and bruises faded away, see. Good as new, the verdette tilted his head and all three of his opponents flinched back, paralyzed glare, hit all three of them at once and they dropped like puppets with their strings cut. Exercise over. All Might called out, Midoriya wins. Good match, you three. Izuku smiled at them, do you need any healing? When none of them responded Izuku rubbed the back of his head sheepishly, right, paralyzed, sorry about that, he moved over to each of them and looked into their eyes, Izuku's flashed yellow and their movement was returned to them, Sato and Iida stood up and Izuku helped Kami up, the fawn-haired girl giving him a smile. Well damn, how are we supposed to win against you, Midoriya? Sato joked as the group walked back towards the class. You have a very impressive set of quirks, Midoriya, Iida complimented his classmate, you must have worked very hard to learn to control and use them properly. 
It takes a bit for each one, Izuku admitted with a chuckle. Excellent work you four, All Might gave thumbs up to them, you're all progressing already from what you showed me during our last heroics class. Well done. Thank you, Sensei. All four bowed to the number one hero. The group of four returned to the rest of the class and All Might called the next group up, what no one noticed through All Might's trademark smile was the slight shaking of the man's body, mostly in his clenched left fist. Young Midoriya is not like him. All Might thought viciously to himself, stop comparing them. Midoriya wants to be a hero. He's a selfless young man with real heroic spirit. It's my job as a teacher to guide him on that path. If I do my job properly then the world won't have to worry about a second all for one. He split his attention between the battle between the current group and Izuku, what he saw of the Verdette helped ease his nerves a bit more. Kami, do you need some healing? Izuku asked the catsuit wearing teen, I hit you point blank with an air cannon, he trailed off looking a bit guilty. I'll take it if it'll make you smile again, Izuku, Kami smiled softly at him while also dropping formality entirely to purr out his name, without a battle to distract him Izuku's entire head went iridescent. Oh okay CCA Kami, Izuku stuttered out as he placed his palms on Kami's shoulders shakily, healing aura, and, amplification, a green aura surrounded Izuku's hands and then spread over Kami's body, with a gasp and a pleasant shiver Kami leaned into Izuku's arms, naturally the verdette froze up, though his quirks remained active and continued to heal Kami's cuts, scrapes, and bruises, she's so close. Izuku screamed into his own head. Many of the girls looked on with blushing cheeks or giggles, Izuku's face could probably light up a room right now. Kami seemed perfectly content to remain where she was as her injuries quickly disappeared. From where he stood, All Might chuckled lightly, his nerves eased just a bit more, he would never offer such help to others so freely, young Midoriya was a future hero and All Might would see to it. Thanks, I, Zu, Ku, Kami teasingly whispered into the Verdette's ear as her aches all disappeared and she stepped back from his arms, she smiled warmly at him and Izuku reflexively smiled back at her, oh yeah, he was so, going to be hers. She would make sure of it. As she looked over to her classmates, she noticed three of them looking at her a bit differently, oh. Well now, it looks like I might have to share. Izuku was still trying to reboot his brain. End chapter. Izuku is just full of surprises isn't he? Kami isn't super patient about getting what she wants. Though which three girls will she have to share with? Well, I think I've given some hints already, a certain group of future pains in the ass have made their first move. Also, All Might still has his moments of suspicion, trauma doesn't just go away after all, Izuku's quirk is the closest thing anyone has ever seen to All for One and it's triggering some deep psychological scars for All Might, but the number one hero is trying at least, he knows Izuku is a real hero in the making, but some scars take years to fade, how will All Might deal with it? Keep reading to find out. Chapter 7. Nezu's Offer, Support Gear. Hey friends and fans, Kairamaru is bringing you another chapter of Collector Hero, Synthesis. After classes and Izuku meets with Nezu, then it's time for some more training, this time in something besides combat. So without further delay, please enjoy. Chapter 7 Nezu's Offer, Support Gear. Izuku stood nervously outside Principal Nezu's office, it was after school and the Verdette boy had reported as requested, he knew, according to Aizawa, that the principal wanted to thank him for his actions in the cafeteria during the press break-in, still, this was the principal of you, a, hi. Izuku knew the chimera like Nezu was a pro hero too, one of the top investigation heroes in the world at that. It only made sense that he was a bit nervous to meet the principal because of that. Feel free to come in, Midoriya, Nezu chuckled and Izuku started as he realized the door to the office had been opened while he was thinking. Nezu chuckled as he motioned for Izuku to follow him into the office, Izuku was offered a seat and the Verdette team sat down, Nezu went around his desk and hopped up into his chair, once the two were settled Nezu smiled at the team, first, I'd like to thank you for your actions today, Midoriya, they were prompt, efficient, and successful, you handled that situation like a true hero and prevented a mass panic. Thank you, sir, Izuku bowed slightly to his principal, I just didn't want anyone to get hurt. Thinking of others as a good mindset for a hero to have, Nezu nodded to the teen, in the spirit of that thought, I do have a proposition for you. What's that, sir? Izuku asked curiously, according to reports form your classes, you have the capability of healing others, correct? Nezu inquired and Izuku nodded to confirm, 
how would you like to have training in that aspect of your quirk from recovery girl? What? Izuku almost jumped from his seat, recovery girl wants to train me. Ha 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 ha, that's quite the reaction. Nezu laughed while Izuku's calmed himself down, slightly embarrassed about his outburst, but yes, recovery girl is interested in helping you develop your healing capabilities. Of course, I'd love to get better at healing others, Izuku nodded to the principal, but when would I have time? The class schedule is pretty full already. If you wouldn't be averse to it, recovery girl has offered to instruct you for an hour after school, three days a week, Nezu explained the offer the school nurse had given him. We have many second and third years that make use of the school's training facilities after classes each day, inevitably injuries occasionally happen and recovery girl takes care of them, she's offering to let you learn under her and get more practice with your healing quirk by helping her take care of our students. Hmm, three days a week isn't bad, I'd still have time to do my homework if the lessons are only an hour. Mom and dad would be fine with it since it'll be part of my hero course studies, Izuku mumbled to himself, much to Nezu's amusement. Feel free to call your parents and get their permission first, Midoriya, Nezu chuckled at the team, we'd need them to give consent for the extra lessons anyway. Oh, right, that makes sense, Izuku rubbed the back of his head as he was pulled out of his muttering, thank you, sir, he smiled at the principal as he pulled out his phone and dialed his father first. Izu, how's my boy doing? Did you have a good day at school? Are you on your way home? Hasashi asked his son quickly, it would become clear to anyone that Izuku wasn't the only fast talker, mutterer in the family if they met Hasashi. I'm fine dad, Izuku smiled into the phone, school was fine, the press found out about All Might teaching at U, A, and ended up trying to swarm the school, so that kinda disrupted lunch a bit. Huh, I know All Might is a big deal, but U, A, technically falls under the government's jurisdiction, You'd think they'd know better than to trespass, Hasashi chuckled from his end, Izuku also chuckled a bit. I kinda used my quirks to keep the cafeteria calm when people started panicking. Lunch rush saw me defuse the situation and told Principal Nezu, I'm in his office right now, he wanted to thank me for my quick thinking, Izuku explained the situation. That's my boy, Hasashi cheered from his end of the call. Izuku felt his cheeks heat up a little in embarrassment as a smile formed on his lips, he did like making his parents proud of him after all, only in the hero course for a few days and already doing heroic things. Principal Nezu also has an offer for me, and I need you and mom's permission for it, Izuku told his dad, I can hand the phone to him so he can explain it, if you want. Sure, that's fine son, Hisashi agreed and Izuku passed his phone to the chimera-like hero. Good afternoon. Midoriya-san, Nezu greeted the parent of one of his students, Izuku watched on as Nezu talked with his dad, the principal explained the extra lessons, what they'd entail, how long they'd take, and how often they'd happen, after several minutes Nezu bid Hisashi a good day and handed the phone back to Izuku. If you want to do these extra lessons, son, I'll give you my permission, Hisashi informed Izuku, much to the team's delight. We'll have to talk with your mom, of course, but I'm sure she'll be thrilled to know that you'll be helping others in a way that's not combat-oriented, you know she worries sometimes. Yeah, I try to stay out of trouble, I don't want to make mom worry any more than she's going to by default, Izuku smiled into the call, hearing his dad chuckle on the other end was good. Alright, son, just bring the permission form that Nezu mentioned home and your mother and I can sign it for you, Hisashi told Izuku and the teen could hear the smile in his father's voice. Thanks dad, Izuku thanked his father with a smile of his own. No problem, Izu, in fact, I think I'll stop by Oak San's Anmitsu place on the way home. We should celebrate tonight, I'm sure your mom will be making your favorite tonight for dinner too. Hisashi laughed and Izuku smiled widely. That sounds great, dad, Izuku was already imagining dinner tonight. His mom's excellent katsudan and following it up with Anmitsu from Oak San's family owned shop just a bit away from their house. That was drool worthy. I'll see you when I get home, Izu, Hisashi chuckled, he could hear the drool forming already. See you soon, dad, bye, Izuku ended the call and put his phone back in his pocket, looking back at Nezu he saw a freshly printed form on the principal's desk. Please have your parents sign this form and bring it back in tomorrow, Midoriya, Nezu instructed with a smile, Izuku took the form, folded it, and then placed it in his book bag, once we have the signed form, we can start your lessons with recovery girl. Yes sir, thank you very much, Izuku bowed to the principal. It's no problem, Midoriya, Nezu waved off his thanks, 
we'll see you tomorrow morning, have a nice evening. Yes sir, Izuku nodded as he stood up and made his way out of the office. Izuku caught the train home, as soon as he walked into the house, he was swept up into a hug from Inko. The mother was babbling out praises for her son as she held him. Izuku returned the hug and smiled at how happy and proud his mother looked. It always made his heart warm to see his mother smiling and happy like this. Izuku pulled out the permission form so his mom could read it over before his dad got home. Izuku headed up to his room to change and relax for a bit, it had been a bit of a day at U, A, and he did have homework he could get done before dinner, admittedly, when he smelled the scent of his mother's katsudan, Izuku got a bit distracted from his homework, when Hisashi came home with the Anmitsu, as he said he would, Izuku decided to get his homework finished so he had time after dinner to savor his dessert. Next day, Yu, A, Izuku had turned in the signed permission form to Aizawa at the end of homeroom. The tired looking man had nodded as he accepted the paper and told Izuku he'd hand it into Nezu. From there it was another standard day of classes, it was becoming clear who the academics of 1A were and which of their classmates might need some help with the regular class subjects, as class representative, Izuku felt he should make note of these things and offer assistance where he could, when he'd brought up the idea at lunch to Momo he'd been graced with a beautiful smile from the ravenet. I think it's a wonderful idea, Midoriya. Momo was practically bouncing and appeared to have sparkles coming off of her. Please, I could use the help, Mina admitted as she rubbed the back of her head with a sheepish laugh. So true, Toru agreed from beside her, I could use some help in mathematics, Jiro nodded to Momo and Izuku. I'm not falling behind too badly, but if you're offering the help. Kami smiled brightly at them both. I'm sure we could set up some kind of study group, Izuku held his chin as he thought over the number of students that were asking for help. If we need a space to study, my residence has plenty of room, Momo offered as she continued to sparkle and bounce. We can think on it and figure out the particulars over the next few days, that'll give us some time to organize and draw up a rough draft of when we could all meet up, Izuku muttered and everyone at the lunch table smiled or chuckled at their class representative. After lunch was heroics and class 1A were all excited for the lessons, Aizawa strolled into the classroom and stood behind the podium, the class instantly was quiet and paying full attention, Aizawa looked over the students for a moment before nodding. Today we'll be going over another common aspect of hero work. Aizawa informed them as he held up a card with the word, gear, on it. We'll be going over support gear and its use in the field. Everything from basics tools, like handcuffs for villains and basic first aid supplies, all the way to quirk augmenting gear made by support companies. Several of you have already put in requests based on Midoriya's analysis and suggestions, so we have more to go over than Yusu Al since quite a few of your requests came in today, with a click of a remote the wall opened up and revealed the 20 cases for the costumes of 1A, the students cheered and Aizawa sighed at the over the top, in his opinion, reaction. That's right listeners, present Mike threw open the door to the classroom, you've got gear, so now it's time you learn how to use it. Yeah, all the students of 1A blinked for a moment at seeing the pro barge in, but the man's excitement was infectious, they all cheered again and Mike reveled in the upbeat attitude. Mike and I both use support gear in the field regularly, Aizawa spoke up and the students settled down a little to listen, their homeroom teacher motioned to his capture scarves while Mike pointed at the speaker device around his neck, we'll be going over the support gear you have and how best to utilize it, so get to the locker rooms, get changed, and then meet us out on the first practice field. Yes sir, the students responded as they stood up and made their way to collect their individual case, Aizawa and Mike left the room first while the students collected their cases, class 1A made their way to the locker rooms and changed quickly, Izuku was act to ally one of the first ones out as he had no new gear or costume redesigned to deal with. Yaomomo, your new costume looks great. Mina cheered as the girls walked onto the field. I like it quite a lot, Momo smiled as she walked beside Jiro and Kami. The newly redesigned costume looked great on the voluptuous teen, the spat-like short shorts with the built-in utility pouches, the zippered top that covered her breasts but left all of her stomach and back exposed for her quirk, the knee and elbow pads, the forearm guards and shin guards, it was truly the costume of a pro that required skin exposure. Izuku felt a bit of pride in the design he'd come up with. Kaminari, dude, that costume looks sick. Siro praised his buddy in the redesign he'd come up with. Thanks dude. I was just incorporating Midoriya's suggestions and it kinda came to me. Kaminari smiled, his costume maintained the same theme as before, 
being mostly black, but it had clearly had some changes. For one, it wasn't as loose anymore, the jacket was noticeably padded and the whole costume was covered in thin silvery lines, on the blonde's hips were two metal batons, and he had a long, thin chain looped over a special holster to hold it, on his hands were fingerless gloves with studded metal knuckles, and he had a choker-like device around his neck with three small green lights on one side, he still maintained his radio device over his right ear for communication as well. Are you forgetting Wa? Aoyama asked with his Yusu L, Sparkles, the teen now had a sword, strapped to his left hip and hidden under his cape was a SQU or pack that seemed to be connected to the new wrist gauntlets he was wearing, both gauntlets featured the same, focusing lenses, as the rest of his costume and looked like they could be adjusted on the fly, with Monsieur Midoriya's magnifique suggestions I now sparkle even more brilliantly. Ochako, oh, you modified your costume too, Suyu spoke up and Ochako oh, nodded with a smile. The overall design was the same, but the brunette had added in forearm GU arts that doubled as grappling cable launchers. Each launcher had three cables and looked to be controlled via reading Ochako's specific muscle movements, the cute teen also had a new collar for her costume that incorporated Izuku's suggestion about applying pressure to certain pressure points to help combat nausea, her boots looked modified as well and Izuku was curious as to the function. Yeah, I implemented Midoriya-kun's ideas and then I had one of my own and added it too. Ochako smiled at her friend, my mobility will be through the roof once I get the hang of these new additions. You got a new setup too, Jiro-chan. Kami asked the perplet teen as she looked at the smart watches on the rocker's wrists. Yeah, I have a lot of preloaded sounds and stuff on each watch, so I plug one of my jacks into one and then the other into my speaker boots and I can play a super amplified version of the sounds, I have super high frequencies, bone shaking bass, and even pre-recorded looping messages for things like evacuations and stuff, Jiro explained with a grin, Kami smiled back as she admired how such a simple change had already given her friend so many new options. All right little listeners, time to pay attention. Mike called out once all the students were assembled, the students gave Aizawa and Mike their attention and awaited instructions. As you know, support gear is used in hero work for everything from capture and restraint to quirk augmentation and amplification. Aizawa began the lesson, some support gear is so specific to the hero that uses it that it is literally powered by the hero's quirk, others are more generalized and are meant to compensate for what the hero can't do with their quirk, Today we'll be going over basic support gear and then some specialized gear, for starters, Mike will tell you about his support gear, Aizawa motioned for the blonde man to take over and Mike smiled at the class. This bad boy right here is my directional speaker system. Mike pointed to the device around his neck, it lets me have full control of the direction my sound travels. I can even do pinpoint aim on targets with it. No matter how high the pitch or how low the bass, this gear can keep up and allow me to use my quirk to the fullest without harming my comrades or innocent bystanders. That's so cool, Izuku muttered out and several people noticed he had his notebook in hand again. Where was he hiding that? Passed through the minds of several of his classmates as they watched Izuku take notes. As for my gear, Aizawa sighed as he stepped forward again, these capture scarves are made from steel wire alloy woven with carbon nanofibers, with time and training I've been able to master them and create a fighting style around this piece of gear, I've yet to have a villain escape these scarves once I've captured them, they're far stronger than any ordinary restraints. For now, since we've got some new gear among you students, let's have a little show and tell. Mike cheered as he pointed to Aoyama, Ochako, and Kaminari. It's better for the class to know what your gear can do so that no one gets injured during training unnecessarily, Aizawa explained the act to Al reasoning, Aoyama, you're up first. We, Aoyama nodded as he walked to the front and stood before his classmates. My newest gear enhances my sparkles even further. The flamboyant blonde smiled smugly, his, sparkles, coming out again, my quirk produces a unique form of energy which I fire from my navel as a laser, Unfortunately, I can only fire the beam for about a second at a time before the kickback happens, but now I can charge the power pack on the back of my costume to hold energy for later use. Here Aoyama turned his back and fluttered the cape dramatically to show off his power pack. That makes sense, Hiroshima nodded at the gear, avoid the kickback entirely when you need to. The power pack is connected to my new, sparkle gauntlets, and lets me fire my laser from them. They're even freely adjustable so that I can focus my beam down into a thin, cutting laser. Aoyama practically preened as he showed off his gauntlets to the class. Speaking of cutting, the blonde took a pose as he drew the sword from his hip. 
My, brilliant sparkling saber, uses stored energy to form a blade that I can use in combat or as a rescue tool to free those that are trapped. The, sword, was a metal construct in the shape of a double-edged blade, but instead of metal edges, Aoyama's unique energy was flowing between the top and bottom of the metal that formed the core of his, sword, it was almost reminiscent of a lightsaber from the Star Wars franchise, if not for the metal core, the sheath for my saber is also a charger for it. So my sword is always fully charged when I need it. I can fully charge both the pack and the sheath in about 30 minutes too. That's so cool. Toru cheered. That gear is so useful for your quirk and its limitations. Mina praised the additions. Monsieur Midoriya deserves most of the credit. His wonderful suggestions have led to me sparkling even brighter. Aoyama thanked Izuku with a smile. Izuku waved off his thanks with a grin of his own. Now that's what I'm talking about. Present Mike applauded as he gave Aoyama thumbs up for his gear. Uraraka, you're up next, Aizawa informed as Aoyama deactivated and sheathed his sword, the two switched places and Ochako smiled softly to the class. I took Midoriya Kun's advice too. Ochako grinned as she showed off her forearm GUARDs. These, grapple GUARDs have three grappling tethers each. They're controlled by my muscle movements and are really responsive. With them, I can swing objects that I've removed the gravity from around and then launch them. I can also remove my own gravity and use them for mobility. I added an idea of my own to help with that too. In my new boots are small air jets, since I won't weigh anything when I use them, they can be small and compact, with them, I can swing through urban areas and get to the scene of disasters and villain attacks quickly, I can also reach people that might be trapped in the upper floors of buildings and safely get them down. Well thought out. Uraraka. Momo clapped for her friend. You're going to be an awesome hero, Chako-chan. Kami cheered the brunette on, Ochako blushed at the praise. Heck yeah, multi-purpose gear is always good. More functions give you more scenarios that you can help with. Present Mike praised Ochako with a bright smile. You thought this through, Ochako, Suyu croaked cutely as Ochako returned to standing next to the Verdette girl. Thanks Sue, Ochako smiled at the frog girl. Kaminari, you're next, Aizawa had the lightning bolt streak team come to the front. Show us what you got. Present Mike encouraged the student, Kaminari nodded with a grin at the teacher. Well, like the others, I tried to incorporate Midoriya's suggestions into my redesign. Kaminari started as he showed off his fingerless gloves. These gloves have metal studded knuckles so I can pack more of a punch. The metal also conducts my electricity, so they're basically tasers too. I have these new metal batons too, though I'll need some practice with them to be really effective. I can electrify them too for an extra shock to a villain. The chain is lightweight but it's not made for restraint. I use it to conduct my electricity onto a target at a distance. I'm hoping to be useful at all ranges someday, you know. Finally is my suit itself. I've had it padded with Kevlar to make it bulletproof for small arms fire and stuff, it's also cut resistant for edged weapons too. These silvery lines are basically the same stuff that they make electric fences out of, so with a bit of power from me the whole costume becomes a defensive piece of equipment. To demonstrate Kaminari let his quirk flow a bit until everyone heard a slight buzzing coming from the team's costume. Bravo Kaminari, bravo. Ieda clapped vigorously for the blonde, to see you making such changes in your pursuit of being a better hero in the future is inspiring. Ah, come on, it's not that amazing, Kaminari chuckled as he rubbed the back of his head. Are you kidding? Sato blinked at the electrification quirk user. Dude your redesign is freaking awesome. You heard good advice and implemented it. That's good work Kaminari. Aizawa nodded to his student and Kaminari smiled even as he looked at the ground from embarrassment from all the praise. Now we have our last change, Jiro. Show us what you've done. Present Mike exclaimed and Jiro blinked at being put on the spot. Oh. Um, okay, Jiro took Kaminari's place and showed off the two smart watches, I have a lot of different sounds and pre-recorded messages stored into these watches, by plugging one jack into a watch and the other into my speaker boots I can produce a highly amplified version of whatever sound I choose, I have high pitch, super low bass, and even messages to assist with evacuations and stuff, Jiro told her classmates. I totally dig it, present Mike gave the rocker girl thumbs up, if you want, I'll get you in contact with the support company that made my setup. We can upgrade those boots of yours into full directional control speakers. Yeah. You would. That'd be awesome, Mike Sensei. Jiro smiled and the DJ hero cheered at her acceptance. Alright, 
Now that we know what the new gear in the class can do, let's move on to practicing. We'll start with basic usage of restraints, like handcuffs, and then move on from there. Aizawa instructed and Mike wheeled over a table with several sets of standard support items on them. What's so hard about using handcuffs? Bakugo scowled as the restraints were being passed out. I'll show you, Aizawa stated and his eyes glowed red with his quirk, in the next second Bakugo found his hands behind his back and the cuffs on his wrists way too tightly. Ow, damn it that hurts, Bakugo snarled, his quirk still being erased meant he couldn't really retaliate much. Exactly, Aizawa intoned, too much force or improper restraint can see a hero in trouble with the law just like villains, heroes have no authority to make an arrest, only the police have that power, that's why we have to obey a strict set of rules while in the field, excessive force is heavily frowned upon and can see your license suspended pending investigation, Aizawa removed the cuffs and deactivated his quirk, Bakugo scowled as he rubbed his wrists. What about in situations where a hero doesn't have a choice but to use excessive force? Todoroki spoke up, the heterochromatic teen had been fairly quiet the last few days after he'd been taken aside by Aizawa, All Might, and Smintos, Izuku didn't want to pry, but he had noticed Todoroki staying after school since that day, he wondered if it had something to do with the dual-haired boy's refusal to use the fire half of his quirk. That's a sad fact of the job that heroes try everything they can to avoid. Mike shook his head while letting out a heavy sigh. The laws regarding professional heroics are strict for a reason. Unfortunately, there are some times where a pro may be left with no other alternative. In situations like that a hero, much like a police officer, has the power to make that call and to use lethal force. All of 1A looked unsettled at the tone of their Yusu ally upbeat teacher, however, know that if you make that call, your license will be suspended until such time as the Hero Public Safety Commission's investigation is over, if they find that you could have resolved the situation without lethal force, then your license will be revoked, and you may very well be looking at jail time yourself. We're here to teach you all you need to know to hopefully avoid being put in such a scenario, Aizawa spoke up and the class shifted their focus to him, the longer your hero career, the more likely it is that you'll face that situation, but most heroes do everything they can to avoid such situations and that's what we'll train you to do as well, understood? Yes, Aizawa sensei, the entire class responded and both Aizawa and Mike nodded as they continued the lesson. I wonder why he asked that question, Izuku thought to himself as he glanced at Todoroki out of the corner of his eye. A hero nerd like Izuku knew that several heroes had made the lethal force decision before, in fact three of the current top 10 in Japan had done so in their careers, Yoroi Musha, Shishido, and Endeavor had all had to use lethal force at least once in their careers, truthfully, it wasn't a surprise for Yoroi Musha, the man had been a hero for nearly four decades now, like Aizawa had just said, the longer you were a hero the more likely the chance you'd be forced into that situation. I hope I never have to make that call, Izuku shook his head and focused on the lesson. End chapter, so Izuku is going to be getting the training from Recovery Girl. That's good, the students of 1A are starting to make changes from canon thanks to Izuku. Some of them have even branched out further based off of Izuku's suggestions. How far will this class of hero students go? We also got to a bit of a heavy topic. Lethal force is an unfortunate reality in the law enforcement field, but if it comes down to the deaths of hundreds or thousands versus the death of a single villain, sometimes a hero has to make that choice, but even doing such a thing for the right reasons can land a hero in hot water. Hopefully, our hero trainees won't have to make that decision with the training they're receiving. What comes next? Keep reading to find out. Chapter 8. Healing and Rescue. Hey friends and fans, Kairamaru is bringing you another chapter of Collector Hero, Synthesis. Izuku has a lesson with Recovery Girl. Then we move on to the next training for our hero course students. So without further delay, please enjoy. Chapter 8 Healing and Rescue. Izuku waved goodbye to his classmates, he and Momo were still gathering everyone's schedules to try and set up a study group for their class. With a bit more time they should be able to have a study session at least twice a week to help their friends. But right now, it was time for Izuku's first after-school lesson with Recovery Girl, the Verdette was excited to learn more about healing and was hopeful to become better and more efficient with his healing quirk, making his way down to the nurse's office, Izuku breathed deeply before knocking on the door. Come in, an elderly voice called out, Izuku opened the door and smiled at the pro hero, Shuzenji Chio, also known as the youthful hero, Recovery Girl, one of the oldest pro heroes still active in Japan. Her quirk, heal, 
was literally irreplaceable to you, eh, hi. It wasn't much a surprise to be honest, healing quirks were often only minor things. The subtype was rare in and of itself, most healing quirks could only heal minor injuries. Things like bruises, small cuts, abrasions, and the like. Stronger healing quirks were almost universally in the healthcare field. Nurses, doctors, surgeons, any quirk that promoted fast healing and recovery from injuries or illness were most likely to go through medical school and get their degrees and certificates to practice medicine. Recovery Girl was one of the rare few that had a powerful healing quirk and became a pro hero instead, she'd saved countless lives in her career, both civilian and fellow heroes, she was a legend in her own right and Izuku was practically vibrating in excitement at getting to learn from her. Recovery Girl, I'm Midoriya Izuku, I'm here for the after-school lessons, Izuku bowed to the old woman. My, you're such a polite young man, Recovery Girl smiled at the verdette, I was so pleased to see another healer come to you, eh? Hey, after so long, come in and sit, she motioned to a chair close to her own, we'll get started with some basic medical knowledge and first aid, then I'll have you demonstrate your quirk so I can get a better understanding of it. Yes ma'am, Izuku nodded as he took a seat beside the elderly woman and paid attention. Almost 45 minutes later and Izuku felt like he'd learned more than he could remember. Recovery girl had given him in-depth notes to take on how the human body healed, what was required to heal, how to facilitate healing without a quirk, how to treat various injuries with standard first aid equipment and more. She had explained how her own quirk worked, and Izuku had pulled out his notebook to take notes on it, which got a chuckle from recovery girl, there was a knock on the door and without missing a beat recovery girl called for the person to enter. Recovery girl, sorry about this, a cute girl smiled at the pro, she had light blonde hair down to her shoulders, with dark eye makeup, and her hair behind her ear on her left side which revealed what looked like a floofy earring, Netsu went a little overboard with his quirk during training. I said sorry, but you were the one practically smothering me with your quirk, Mawada, the guy next to her spoke up, he had white hair, swept forward, that cast his eyes in shade, he was a bit taller than the girl and was wearing a hoodie under his uniform jacket. You know my quirk is flammable. The girl Mawada responded with an eye roll. What was I supposed to do, suffocate? The boy Netsu questioned his classmate. Alright, alright, enough arguing, recovery girl spoke up over the two teens, what kind of injury do you have? When my quirk caught fire it burned my arm, Mawada revealed her lightly burned arm. The skin was a bright red and had a few visible blisters, Izuku was surprised the girl was able to be so calm with what must be a painful injury. Does your quirk work on burns too, Midoriya? Recovery girl asked her new student. Yes ma'am, Izuku confirmed with a nod. Excellent, I've wanted to observe it in action, this'll be the perfect opportunity, Recovery girl smiled at him, she motioned for Mawada to sit down on a stool and gave the burn a look over to check how severe it was, you kids need to be more careful this is already a mild second degree burn. Yes ma'am, sorry, both Netsu and Mawada apologized with small bows. Now, Mawada, this first year is Midoriya Izuku, he has a healing quirk that I'm training him to use more efficiently, I'll be having him heal your burn, if that's alright with you. Nice to meet you, Midoriya-san, I'm Mawada Fua from 2A, Mawada introduced herself with a smile. You're my direct upperclassman then, Izuku chuckled lightly, Midoriya Izuku, Class 1A. Alright, Midoriya, recovery girl moved closer to observe Izuku's healing quirk in action, you may begin. Yes, Izuku nodded to his teacher before giving Mawada a small smile as he took her burned arm into his hands, this may feel a little odd at first, senpai, with that a soft green glow covered Izuku's hands before spreading over Mawada's arm. Oh, Mawada blinked before suppressing a giggle, it sort of tickles, the red and blistered skin began to fade, the redness of her burn started fading to a dark pink, then a light pink, before finally fading entirely, the blisters also seemed to reverse their formation, each of the small bubbles on her skin shrinking until they were gone completely. There we go, all done, Izuku smiled as the glow of healing aura faded away and he let go of her arm. Let me check it over to be sure, recovery girl grinned as she took Mawada's arm and examined it for a moment, seeing the injury healed and no side effects made the old pro smile, very good Midoriya, completely healed with no trace of the injury left. Thank you, Midoriya-san, Mawada smiled at him and Izuku smiled back, the older teen flexed her hand a few times before running her fingers over the previously burned area, it's like it never happened, that's a good healing quirk. Thank you, Mawada-senpai, Izuku bowed slightly to his upperclassman. 
hopefully it can restart my heart if you succeed in suffocating me next time, Netsu cracked a joke at his classmate's expense. I'm going to be a capture hero in the future, it's not my fault you're too slow, Mawada waved him off with a shooing motion. Suffocation isn't capture, it's murder, Mawada. Netsu exclaimed at her. Then don't make me suffocate you, Mawada shrugged as she pulled on her uniform jacket. You can argue once you leave, recovery girl waved the two second years out the door, until then, keep quiet in my office, please, both teens stopped talking and gave small, apologetic bows to the old woman, a moment later they closed the door behind them and the argument resumed, I swear, those two are either going to end up together or at each other's throats by the time they grew eight, she chuckled and Izuku looked away at the talk of relationships. The last few minutes of his hour of study with recovery girl was simply going over how healing aura worked, its normal limitations, and how his boosting quirks affected it. Recovery girl was happy to know that healing aura had a much less detrimental kickback to those being healed than her own did. While her quirk could heal even severe injuries quickly without a problem, it sapped the target's stamina to do so, Izuku's quirk provided the energy necessary for the healing being done, as long as Izuku himself had the energy to spare, he could heal people that wouldn't have the stamina to spare for her quirk, that was a good thing in several situations and recovery girl was looking forward to teaching her new student as much as possible. The next day, fundamental heroics class, freedom, Mina exclaimed happily, her fists in the air, the pinket was so happy now that the standard classes were over, too much, too fast. My brain was almost cooked. It was clear to all that she wanted to get to the heroics class already. Heck yeah, sister. Way too much for one day. Kami laughed as she high-fived Mina, let's get out of these desks and get moving. Well, those two are happy now, Izuku grinned to himself as he gathered all of his books and placed them into his bag, he could admit to being excited too, I wonder what we're going to be doing today. If you lot would settle down I might be able to tell you. Aizawa spoke up, the class instantly froze in place. No one had even seen him come in. They all quickly settled and sat with perfect posture, that's better, he mumbled before he pulled out a card and showed it to the class, today you'll be doing rescue training to prepare you for floods, fires, and other disasters. The card in his hand did indeed have the word, rescue, on it in bright red letters, some of the class broke out into excited murmurs, much to the perpetu ally exhausted teacher's irritation. Oh, I can't wait. Ochako was so excited she had a bright smile on her face, Izuku felt his cheeks warm slightly, rescue is what I plan to specialize in. She's so cute, Izuku thought to himself seeing how bouncy Ochako was being. Me too, Suyu riveted happily, sharing a smile with her brunette friend, I'll be right at home in flood rescue scenarios. I'm pumped, let's do this. Hiroshima grinned widely. Pipe down, Aizawa commanded, his eyes flashing red and his hair levitating as he activated his quirk. The students immediately quieted again, stop making me use my quirk. You're giving me dry eye, he grumbled out, clearly annoyed, as he pulled out eye drops and applied them, now, it's up to you to choose whether to wear your costume or not, some of them may not be suitable for certain scenarios, the location we'll be training at is a bit remote, so we'll be going by bus, that'll be all, get ready and don't waste time, he gave them a hard stare before grabbing his yellow sleeping bag and leaving the room. Rescue training, Izuku murmured to himself as he grabbed his case, he thought of the many, many times he'd watched All Might's debut video growing up, this was a chance to see if he could really be a hero capable of working in all fields. His gaze sharpened with determination as he headed for the locker room. The bus turned out to be an open seating type, so everyone quickly found their own seats, Izuku ended up between Momo and Ochako, which would explain his red face, on Momo's other side was Kami, and on Ochako's was Suyu, Mineta was glaring daggers at Izuku from his spot between Iida and the window. So, Midori, you explained the basics of your quirk at the assessment test, Kami started up the conversation and Izuku turned to look at her along with Momo, Suyu, and Ochako, is there a limit to how many copies you can have? I noticed you haven't asked to copy any of our quirks. Oh, well, I act to ally don't know if I have an upper limit, Izuku didn't even stumble over his words as he replied. Talking about quirks was comfortable territory for him, so if he focused on that he could have a clear conversation, even while surrounded by cute girls. I haven't felt any sort of change since I first started copying quirks, no kickback, no strain, no instinctive feeling that I have all that I can hold, I'm honestly not sure what the limit could be. That's rather impressive, Midoriya, 
Momo smiled at him, Izuku fought valiantly to keep himself from becoming a stuttering mess, though I'm also curious as to why you haven't asked to copy any of the quirks in our class, they're all useful and several are incredibly versatile. I only copy quirks that are offered to me Yusu ally, Izuku rubbed the back of his head, so many of the classmates I grew up with were terrified I'd copy their quirks and they'd be less unique, so I just never copied anything that wasn't offered to me, there are some I wouldn't take though, either they'd take too long to learn and control, or the kickback would interfere with my other quirks. I see, Momo looked thoughtful, her, thinking pose, was really cute in Izuku's opinion, my creation quirk would probably be of the first problem, it requires a lot of chemistry knowledge along with knowledge of molecular structures, and how the item you wish to make is made before it can really be useful. You're also a genius, which I most certainly am not, so it would take me a lot longer to memorize so much information, Izuku smiled at the ravenette. Th thank you, Midoriya, Momo covered her cheeks with her hands as she blushed, a genuine compliment, free of any ulterior motive, was something Momo had rarely gotten from anyone but her parents, coming from such a capable young man like Izuku, it was no wonder the heiress was flustered. What about mine? Ochako questioned and Izuku gently shook his head. That's another exception, Uraraka, Izuku informed her with a smile, your quirk is an emitter that activates with a physical condition, touching your finger pads, that's a secondary trait of your quirk, a mutant one at that, my quirk can't copy that secondary trait, so I wouldn't be able to use your quirk, even if I copied it. Oh, Ochako looked at her finger pads with a cute pondering gaze, Izuku didn't get flustered, but he was fairly certain he was fidgeting slightly in his seat, why were so many of the girls in his class so cute? I guess that makes sense, you can't copy mutant type quirks at all, so even if the quirk is an emitter you can't always copy it, depending on how it functions. That's right, Izuku confirmed with a nod, an encouraging smile on his face, Ochako blushed prettily and Izuku felt his heart thump in his chest. So, Midoriya-chan, how many quirks do you have in total? Suyu asked, her gaze on him and Izuku grinned at the cute frog girl. Well, Izuku looked like he was thinking and all four girls leaned in closer in anticipation, that would be telling, he grinned, making all four girls almost face fault. Boo! Kami playfully stuck her tongue out, no fair, Midori. What a tease. I'm kidding, Izuku couldn't help but chuckle a little, he so rarely got to use that little joke, so he felt he should use it when the situation presented itself. At the moment it's about three dozen, all four of girls started at the number, eyes wide, and jaws dropped. Th three dozen, Suyu croaked out while staring at her fellow dead in shock. H how, so many, Momo was having a hard time forming words. That's, that's just, crazy, Kami had completely dropped her normal style of speech in her stunned state. How did, when could, how long, Ochako couldn't seem to decide on a question to ask her friend. It takes a while to work each of them out, Izuku gave them a gentle smile, my quirk helps substantially, but other than that it's just practice, I still occasionally get replies of people wanting to offer a copy of their quirk, I haven't accepted one since before the entrance exams though. We're here, look sharp now. Aizawa slipped out of his sleeping bag with practiced ease as he stood up and led them off the bus, a few short minutes saw everyone off the bus and walking into the gigantic dome-shaped building, when they saw what was inside the building, most of the students let out excited exclamations. Holy crap, are we at Universal Studios Japan? Kaminari questioned gleefully, making several others turn and deadpan at him. Not quite, a voice, that seemed like it was being heard through a speaker or old radio, called out to them, Ochako let out a loud gasp as the group turned to face the speaker, there's the flood zone. The conflagration zone, the landslide zone, every disaster you can imagine. The woman speaking wore a very puffy astronaut styled suit and yellow shoes, her arms were held wide as if to welcome them all. Oh, Izuku exclaimed, his eyes bright as he recognized the hero, it's space hero, 13. She's one of the top rated rescue heroes in Japan. I love 13. Ochako was bouncing up and down in excitement, her brown eyes sparkling as she looked at the pro, Izuku was fairly certain he now knew who Ochako's favorite hero was. This training ground that I created is the perfect site to put your heroism to the test. I call it, the unforeseen simulation joint. 13 introduced with a flourish, everyone could practically hear the smile in her voice, even with the speaker filter. It really is USJ. Several of them exclaimed, comparing the two acronyms against each other. 13, where's all might? 
I thought he was supposed to be meeting us here, Aizawa questioned his colleague. Well, Thirteen sighed, before subtly holding up three fingers, I'm afraid he got caught up in quite a few incidents on his way to the school this morning, he's exhausted himself, he's resting in the break room right now, though he did call to tell me he would try to make it to the latter half of the class. That man is the height of irrationality, at this point he should just move on to the campus already and be done with it, Aizawa sighed while pinching the bridge of his nose, well, no point in wasting time, we'll start without him. Of course, but before that, I have one or two points, Thirteen said, before pausing, or three, maybe four, her voice started sounding a bit sheepish as she continued, perhaps five, or six. The entire class deadpanned and sweat dropped, well, as I'm sure many of you are aware, my quirk is called, black hole, it draws in and breaks down everything, Ochako was nodding along with their instructor, her eyes still sparkles, Izuku couldn't help but find her actions adorable, she was so cute. Yeah, you've used it to save countless numbers of people in almost every disaster imaginable. You break down debris and free trapped civilians and even clear roadways for medical vehicles, police, firefighters, and everything. Ochako did her best Izuku impression without even meaning to, she was just so excited. That's right, indeed, my power is capable of saving many lives. But it would also be incredibly, frustratingly easy to use it to kill. That put a damper on the excited mood of the students, bringing down the intensity so they were all paying attention, just as I'm sure it would be uncomfortably easy for some of your own quirks to take a life, in our super-powered society, the usage of quirks is heavily restricted and monitored, it may seem like a stable system, but never forget that it only takes one wrong move with an uncontrollable quirk for people to die, 13 warned the hero students. During Aizawa's assessment test, you were able to touch upon the true power of your quirks, with All Might's person-to-person -person hero scenarios, you experience the danger of using your quirks against other people. Today will be a different story. Today you shall learn how your powers can be used, not in combat, but how they can be used to save lives instead. The space-themed hero had her arms spread wide, as if to indicate the whole of the USJ behind her. Before Thirteen could continue, the lights all over the dome began to flicker strangely, everyone looked around in confusion at the odd phenomenon, Kaminari, an electric quirk user, blinked and tilted his head, he recognized the signs of fluctuating electrical output after all. What's going on? Aizawa questioned as he took charge, his students were his first priority in the event anything unplanned happened. Something's gone wrong with the power. Thirteen sounded confused as she looked up at the flickering lights, it was his experience that drew Aizawa's attention to the small distortion forming down in the plaza. The underground hero glared at the anomaly as he reached into his scarves to pull up his goggles. A black, smoke-like hole tinged with dark purple had formed in the center of the plaza. Two glowing yellow eyes appeared and seemed to glare at the surroundings for a moment. The smoky mass expanded outwards, swirling wider and wider before a hand emerged from within. Another hand emerged to join the first, almost like they were pulling apart a curtain, what emerged was a man's head, but there was nothing normal about it, at all. He had what appeared to be severed hands covering his body, on his arms, around his neck, and even on the front and back of his head. The one on his face was acting as a macabre version of a mask, between the fingers of the hand mask a demented red eye glared hatefully at them all. Then, before the eyes of both teachers and all 20 hero course students of class 1A, more and more people started coming through the black-purple smoke, each one of the emerging people had one thing in common, a malice in their gaze that promised violence and pain. This isn't part of the class, is it? Kirishima questioned as they beheld the large group coming from the smoke-like portal. No, Aizawa stated flatly, his tone dead serious, those are villains. No way, why would villains break into you, eh? Every teacher is a pro-hero. That doesn't make any sense. Mineta cried out. 13, aren't there intruder sensors here? Momo asked the pro. Of course, there are but they're not activating, I'm even using the Manu Al override. 13 revealed the small device in her hand, it was a control for the USJ systems, the touchscreen was filled with a single large message. System not responding, Kaminari, try to reach the school with your personal communicator, Aizawa instructed as he partially unwound his capture scarves. Yes sir, Kaminari nodded as he tapped the device on his ear, ow, damn it. The blonde cried out a second later as he practically tore the communicator off his ear, even from a distance everyone could hear the horribly loud shrieking of feedback interference coming from the device, they've jammed the frequencies. 
he called out as he held his ringing ear. I doubt they snuck into the main campus as well, they picked the perfect time to attack here, with the fewest pros and multiple targets, they clearly have an objective and have brought in quirks to reach that objective, which includes someone capable of jamming outgoing signals, Todoroki was still calm in the face of this danger, or one of the few able to keep his cool at least. The large, swirling smoke-like portal closed after a large, monstrosity, of a creature emerged and stood behind the man covered in severed hands. Izuku would have tried to count how many villains there were, but he was dealing with something he'd never dealt with before. The large creature was grating against his quirk's sensing ability. It came off as a mutant type, but it wasn't just one, it gave him multiple impressions of quirk type. That shouldn't be possible, the swirling smoke seemed to form into a humanoid shape, it was even wearing a sharp outfit that made it look like a butler or something. Then he was hit with the same feeling again, multiple impressions of quirk type. This one was different though, it wasn't just mutant type impressions, it was two quirks, one emitter another mutant, but that wasn't it, something else was going on with the suit wearing, humanoid fog. Midoriya, Aizawa called out and Izuku snapped out of his trance, looking over to his teacher he caught the worried gazes of several of his classmates, it took him a moment to realize he was breathing heavily and had sweat on his face, what's wrong? Follow 13 and Evaku ate the USJ. Sir, Izuku shook his head, trying to get his thoughts in order, that big one, the monster looking thing, it has multiple quirks. Mutant types, I just don't know what they are. Aizawa's eyebrows rose at the information. What do you mean? Aizawa questioned as the class was quickly gathering between the two pros, multiple quirks were an incredible rarity, most people that appeared to have two quirks often had a hybrid of their parents with abilities from both, Todoroki was a perfect example, to act to ally have two completely separate quirks was something like one in a hundred million odds. I don't understand it, I've never sensed things like this before, Izuku shook his head and wiped the sweat from his brow, the suit wearing guy, the one that created the fog, gate, or whatever, he has two quirks. One mutant the other emitter, but it's not right. Not right, how? Aizawa needed clarification, Midoriya was obviously dealing with something he'd never encountered and it was making the team lose focus. His emitter quirk, it's one quirk, but not really. I comma I don't know how to explain it. One, two, three, at least, how, I don't understand, it's like someone forced three different quirks together and made them one quirk. Izuku was holding his head at this point, this didn't make sense. His collector quirk was trying to analyze this seemingly impossible anomaly and it was giving him a headache. Midoriya, focus, Aizawa got his student's attention on him, don't worry about it right now. We'll figure things out after you students get to safety. Now Evaku aid with 13 and your classmates. Izuku blinked as his breathing slowed back down to normal and his head stopped hurting, before anyone could move though, the man covered in the severed hands spoke loudly for all to hear. Huh. This is strange, the man spoke with a raspy voice, the schedule we stole said All Might, 13, Eraserhead, and Class 1A would be here, so where's All Might? He questioned, scratching at his neck, his red eyes staring at everyone up on the platform with nothing but disgust. All of Class 1A felt a tremor go up their spines at the look, it was, to put it simply, inhuman. End chapter. Well, some good work in Izuku's first lesson with Recovery Girl, followed by the USJ going straight to hell, shit. Izuku's having some problems with Nomu. Collector has never dealt with such anomalies before. It's trying to discern quirk types and capabilities but it simply doesn't have enough data. So now Izuku's brain is feeling like splitting in two as it works to comprehend the situation. Unfortunately, mutant types are a bad match for both Aizawa and Izuku when it comes to their own quirks. That could be bad, Aizawa can't erase them and Izuku can't copy them. What'll happen next? Keep reading to find out. Chapter 9. USJ Attack. Hey friends and fans, Kairamaru is bringing you another chapter of Collector Hero, Synthesis. Well the villains have invaded the USJ, Class 1A is about to be put through the ringer. So without further delay, please enjoy. Chapter 9 USJ Attack. 13. Get the students out of here. Aizawa ordered as he pulled on his goggles and leapt down the stairs towards the large group of villains, with his capture scarves in hand he picked out his first targets. Thirteen was corralling the students and urging them towards the exit but that option was quickly cut off when the security shutters around the USJ began to slam closed, the humanoid fog villain appeared in front of them, Izuku's quirk was still trying to puzzle out what the hell was going on with this guy, 
his head had never heard like this from his analysis ability. Good afternoon, hero students, several of the class dropped into fighting stances in front of the villain as Thirteen quickly placed herself between the villain and the students. We are the League of Villains, I hope you'll forgive our audacity, but we are here today with a declaration of war, his courteous tone did nothing to hide the outright lack of care he had for their lives, it made a few of the students of class 1A shiver in fear, to that end, we have come to this bastion of heroism to kill the symbol of peace along with an entire class of aspiring heroes. Death. This villain was completely serious. They were planning to kill an entire class of teenagers, right here and now. A chill ran down their spines as if ice was dumped down their shirts. Thirteen lifted a finger and a cap on her suit opened up, but before she could activate her quirk, Bakugo and Kirishima both attacked, the fog-like person's eyes widened slightly and he moved, drawing attention from Izuku, simple deductions he could pull off quickly, he'd already suspected too, the humanoid fog moved away from Bakugo's blast and Kirishima's rock-like fist, that was quite close, you may only be students, but I guess you are the best of the best. No, get away from him, Thirteen yelled, frustrated that she couldn't use her quirk, but also knowing the dangers of being close to a warping quirk. Be gone, the humanoid fog demanded, his purple-black smoke began to expand and Izuku finalized his rough plan. Physicality boost, durability up, efficiency, enhance function, kinetic boost, and force multiplier. Izuku compiled his quirks together at blistering speed before he launched himself forward with everything he had. Bakugo and Kirishima only saw a green blur slam into the villain before slamming into the wall near the door. Stay still, Izuku demanded of the humanoid fog, he scrambled to find purchase on the villain, the Verdet was looking for a solid contact point to use, quirk nullification, he found it just between the collar of the villain's shirt and the metal brace he seemed to be wearing around his neck, the black purple fog stilled and began to dwindle away, the villain's glowing yellow eyes widened as he lost the use of his emitter quirk. Yeah, Midoriya, Kaminari yelled in support for his classmate. He got him, Siro exclaimed, a wide smile on his face, even though it was hidden by his helmet. An erasure subtype, the warp gate villain seemed shocked by the revelation, he continued his struggles and Izuku's eyes widened as he realized that, even as boosted as he'd made himself, the villain was almost equal in strength. Don't think that will save you. Move aside, students. Thirteen instructed as she rushed towards the steel shutter blocking the door, if she couldn't override the system, then she'd destroy the obstruction. All ten caps on her suit's gloves popped open and everyone suddenly felt drawn in towards the pro hero, even those behind her felt a pull on their bodies. The steel security shutter began to shriek as it was warped, bent, and even to ally broken apart by the power of Thirteen's, black hole, quirk. No, the humanoid fog yelled as his struggles increased, Izuku tried to force him down further, the strength of this guy was unreal. Was that his mutant quirk? The steel shutter was torn apart, broken down, and sucked into Thirteen's quirk, the regular doors behind the shutter were still locked down by the system though, Thirteen didn't worry about the damages, she quickly broke down the entire structure, leaving a fairly large hole open to the outside world. Enough. The villain roared and Izuku lost his hold on one of the villain's arms, a shot to his temple made him flinch, another came, and then another. Just before the villain threw him off, Izuku activated Collector's copying ability, he felt the sensation of acquisition just as he was thrown to the ground and the villain seemingly exploded into a massive cloud. Disappear and die. Ieda, run back to the campus and get help. Thirteen ordered as she held back the villain's quirk by sucking it up with her own, you're the fastest. Hurry, we need reinforcements. Yes sensei, Ieda dropped into a runner's starting position, his engines revved up, louder than any of the students had ever heard them, with a loud bang Ieda rocketed forward and was through the hole to the outside before the villain could even react. No, the humanoid fog yelled before his tactic suddenly changed and Thirteen saw a spiraling warp gate appear directly in front of her. She was going to suck it into her quirk as well, until she felt a powerful pull on the back of her own costume. With a painful cry she deactivated her quirk just as her suit was torn away and broken down into the warp gate behind her. The villain had turned her own quirk against her. She could feel her back, partially shredded by her own quirk, and then her vision went fuzzy and she got a light-headed sensation as she collapsed to the floor. 13. Ochako screamed loudly as they all watched the pro hero hit the ground. Now be gone. The villain outright roared as his quirk washed over the group like a tidal wave. 
one student had the presence of mind to skip backwards and land near the down 13, the black purple fog swirled around and shrank, before disappearing entirely, now, to finish off 13, he stopped and blinked, not seeing the downed pro anywhere, where? One of the students must have grabbed her before I warped them, he reasoned before letting out a heavy exhale, Shigaraki Tamura would not be pleased with his failure, with that he warped towards the one he served and watched over. Phew, Kami took a breath as she stopped exhaling her glamour. She and 13 faded back into sight as the illusion wore off, I'm glad he didn't check over here, the fawn-haired girl sighed as she inhaled some much-needed oxygen, she quickly pulled her small utility pack, which she wore on her side, open, pulling out what first aid supplies she had, she quickly but carefully set about disinfecting and bandaging 13's torn up back, don't you die on us, sensei, she whispered to the unconscious pro hero. Plaza, damn it, he's fast. A villain cried out as Aizawa dashed between them, he was quickly silenced as the capture scarf wrapped around his waist and he was swung into a larger villain that had been trying to blindside Aizawa with a punch. The underground hero had already dealt with 23 of the villains in the plaza. By his count there had been roughly 40 that had come out of the gate. They were all small-time thugs and crooks at least. The kind of villain that he found robbing convenience stores or mugging people at night when he did his hero work. A small blessing to be fair, had they brought in villains that had infamy and were wanted by the government, they'd have even worse problems, the thought of a, ranked villain, a villain that had caused incidents and evaded capture for an extended period of time, made Aizawa grimace, a B rank villain would probably be too much for any of the kids to handle, especially if it was one that excelled in combat, he didn't even want to consider an A rank villain, like the one known as muscular. What had Aizawa the most worried at the moment was twofold. The first being that he'd noticed people in the waters of the flood zone. That meant that the villains who'd come through the gate in the plaza weren't the only ones, it also meant the most likely scenario for the villains was to somehow split the students up and pick them off. The second worry came from the fact that the large monstrosity along with the obvious leader hadn't moved since they'd gotten there, both seemed content to watch him beat down these thugs until there weren't any more of them standing, that didn't bode well for him or the students. Aizawa's quirk might not be the best for large groups or prolonged fights, but he was able to quickly sow confusion among the villains by erasing random quirks on occasion. The villains quickly realized they had no way of knowing if their quirks would activate or not. That uncertainty made them hesitate, and that hesitation was what he was capitalizing on right now, he swung out with a kick, his legs slamming into the stomach of a lanky villain with claws before he wrapped his capture scarves around a second villain's outstretched arms and jerked them to the side, the villain they slammed into fell to the ground and Aizawa wasted no time kicking him one good time in the head to knock him out, he still had over a dozen left to deal with. Stay strong students, don't let this be the end of you. Aizawa thought as he erased four different villains' quirks and watched one of them suddenly seem to deflate from his previous bulky form, Aizawa had found his next target. Mountain Zone, what the fuck, Jiro cursed as she, Momo, and Kaminari were surrounded by a large group of villains, the last few moments had been a blur for them, being engulfed in the black-purple fog, the feeling of weightlessness, followed by the sensation of falling, the trio had landed, unsteadily, on the rocks of the mountain they'd seen on the other side of the USJ, the villains had literally been lying in wait for them. Well now, one of the villains, a rather hairy man wearing a stretched tank top and thick workman's pants, wolf whistled making both Jiro and Momo's skin crawl, we got two fine looking young ladies here, right, boys. He leered and several of the men surrounding them laughed. Hey, a woman standing next to him glared, we're here to kill them, not indulge your appetites you degenerate, she was wearing a form-fitting black dress and showing a good amount of cleavage, her long, Black hair fell halfway down her back and she had a pretty face, all three hero course students wondered why the woman was a villain at all. Go lighten up a bit. The hairy man scoffed at the woman. Don't cock block just because you aren't getting any. The woman's eyebrow twitched as she glared at the man. Look, there's a guy here too, you can have the blonde all to yourself, he chuckled for a second before he stopped. A long, sharp blade had formed from the woman's index finger and was now resting against the hairy man's throat, the woman's pretty features had vanished. She now looked like some kind of monster from a horror movie. Her face gaunt and her eyes sunken in, even her hair had lost its luster and seemed soaked and greasy suddenly. Let me make this very clear, she rattled out, her voice raspy but still heard by all, if anyone's dick comes out of their pants, it comes off your body. Understand, every man in the zone, including Kaminari, crossed their legs or covered their crotch near instantly. 
All right, all right, damn. The hairy man agreed and the blade was removed from his throat. Let's just kill them and get it over with, the woman rasped and the villains ran forward to do just that. Back off, Jiro yelled, plugging one of her jacks into a smart watch, the second jack plugged into her boot and before the villains could close even half the distance, a bone-shakingly loud wave of sound slammed into a large number of them, the villains screamed, unheard over the loud sound waves, many of them slamming their hands over their ears while others collapsed outright. Bitch. A villain with what looked like a metallic fist screamed as he rushed Jiro, his punch was blocked by Kaminari's batons, the force of the blow making the blonde skid back a few centimeters. No, way, in, hell. Kaminari struggled against the villain's strength before channeling his quirk into the metal batons, the villain's own metallic fist conducted the electricity sending him screaming to the ground. We'll fight together, Momo declared as she created a staff from her leg and held it at the ready. Landslide zone. You guys plan to kill All Might? Todoroki questioned as he watched a group of thugs rush him. Don't make me laugh, in an instant half the zone was frozen over in several centimeters of ice, every villain had been frozen in their tracks and Todoroki exhaled frosted breath. Die, a bird-like villain with a spear flew at Todoroki from behind, he was clocked in the face with a rock from nowhere and Todoroki used the lapse in concentration to grab the villain's weapon and freeze it and the bird-like man both. Jeez, Todoroki. Toru yelled at the two-tone teen, it's a good thing I was standing behind you. You almost froze me too. Sorry, Todoroki apologized to the invisible girl, only her gloves and sneakers showing where she was, I didn't even realize she was here. He thought to himself, both impressed by her stealth and also glad he hadn't frozen a classmate at the same time he dealt with the villains, thank you for the assist. No problem, Toru chirped back, both of her gloves giving a, peace, sign. Now. I have some questions for you, Todoroki turned and glared at the closest villain. If you don't answer me honestly, then I'm going to leave you frozen like this, you'll probably develop frostbite before anyone comes to get you, you might even lose parts of your body from it, the villains nearby were all starting to panic at this point, I want to be a hero, so I'd prefer to not do something so cruel, but, he left the sentence hanging and Toru felt herself shivering too, and not just because of how cold it was. Downpour Zone what the fuck is that? A villain screamed just before a large, clawed hand slammed him and two other villains through the concrete wall on the other side of the fake street. Dark Shadow was out, nearly in full force, in the gloom of the Perpetu Al Rain, Takoyami was letting his quirk decimate every villain that got close while Kaoda, who had also been warped here, watched his back and held onto a large LED light, another suggestion of Izuku's taken to heart, Takoyami trusted Kaoda to turn the bright light on and shine it on him if he lost control of Dark Shadow. Rarg, Dark Shadow let out a very unbird-like roar as its normally yellow eyes were now red from the increased power. Every villain that came within its range was knocked aside like a child might knock aside a toy, Takoyami was grinding his teeth slightly as he made sure to exert enough control over Dark Shadow to not kill anyone, he'd have to give Kaoda the signal soon if they couldn't get to the exit, he was slowly, but surely, Feeling his control over his quirky road the longer he let Dark Shadow roam free within the gloom. Ruins zone, out of my way, Bakugo yelled as he blasted a large villain aside with his quirk, he and Kirishima had been dropped into this area and been surrounded by villains almost instantly, the two had proven to be more than their opposition expected as they'd broken through the encirclement and were now fighting their way through the horde of thugs. Stay down, Kirishima barked as he landed his rock-like fist into the gut of another villain, the thug collapsed holding his stomach and his eyes rolled up a second later as he lost consciousness, it's like there's no end to them. Die, a chameleon-like villain seemingly appeared out of nowhere as he lunged for Kirishima's back with a knife, he quickly found a hand palming his face before Bakugo slammed him headfirst into the floor and then blasted him. These guys are nothing but thugs and weaklings. Bakugo growled, they really thought they could take down All Might with these scrubs. We need to find our way out of here and regroup with the others, Kirishima stated as they leapt out the window of the broken building they'd been in and landed on the cracked roadway. No shit, stupid hair. Bakugo retorted and Kirishima rolled his eyes at the abrasive blonde, they headed for the edge of the zone to find the exit. Conflagration zone, it's so fucking hot, Mina complained as she sweated from the constant flames. I know, but we have to deal with it for now. Ochako panted as she flung another large chunk of rubble at approaching enemies before returning its gravity at the last moment, the large crash and the cries of shock from their enemies barely heard over the roar of the flames. My quirk is almost useless here, 
Ciro grumbled since every time he fired his tape it was quickly set ablaze. We need to get out of here as fast as possible, Shoji commented as he used his quirk to try and locate the exit. Tell that to these guys. Mina retorted as she lobbed acid at the villains making several of them scream as the caustic substances chemically burned their skin. Mountain Zone, Far Side, Who the heck are these guys? Sato questioned Aoyama as they were faced down by two villains. I'm not familiar with either, but they're clearly not meant to be here, Aoyama replied as he readied his laser. Only two. One of the villains spoke up at seeing the students, he was tall, probably close to two meters in height, muscular, but not bulky, more lean, his hair was slate gray and his eyes a dark blue, he was shirtless, his only clothing being a pair of black cargo pants with a chain as a belt, he might have been in his mid-twenties, I think I'm insulted. Well, they do have that man-child as a leader, the other villain spoke up. He was wearing a hoodie and cargo pants, both in dark gray colors, what hair could be seen was a dark brown and his eyes were green, he might have been in his early twenties, he also wore a pair of gloves and a mask that covered his nose down to his chin, Sato blinked as he realized that only the guy's eyes and forehead could be seen, everything else was covered by clothing, after this job, I think I'll be cutting ties with this little league of theirs, I don't much care for the management. Which one do you want? The shirtless villain asked the covered one, I'll take whichever one you don't pick. I'll take yellow boy, I guess, the green-eyed villain shrugged, he's a power type it looks like, those are Yusu ally entertaining. Looks like I'm fighting the wannabe knight then. The tall, shirtless villain grinned as he cracked his knuckles, make sure you entertain me, blondie. Ah damn, Sato grabbed a dose of sugar and dumped it into his mouth, he bulked up a bit as his strength increased. Too slow, the shirtless villain roared as he suddenly blitzed forward and threw a punch at Aoyama. The blonde fired his laser and blasted the villain backwards for a second before the laser ceased. Don't take your eyes off your opponent now. The hoodie wearing villain mocked Sato as he swung a kick at the team's head, Sato blocked the kick with his shoulder, his eyes widened when it felt like he'd just been hit with a large metal bat. He staggered back from the blow and felt his shoulder throb a bit, let's split you two up, okay. Wah, Sato didn't even get time to question the villain. Sento, take your new pal away from here for a bit. The masked villain yelled. Don't tell me what to do, Arui. Sento yelled back as he stood up from where he'd been blasted. His chest was covered in what looked like plates of bone, kind of like a cross between the shell of a turtle and the scales of a snake, his quirk was only slightly singed by Aoyama's laser, regardless of what he yelled, Sento took off at Aoyama in a full sprint, Aoyama fired his laser again, but the villain covered his whole body in the bio armor of his quirk and charged straight through the beam. He all but tackled Aoyama and carried the armored blonde away down the mountain. Aoyama, Sato hollered and made to chase after his classmate. You really don't pay attention, do you? Arui questioned from behind Sato, he felt the kick impact his side, once again like a large steel bat had hit him, and he rolled with the blow, Sato stopped his roll and got to his feet while holding his side, if you don't look sharp, you're going to die kid, if you want to be a big hero, then let's see you do it. Sato didn't respond with words, he quickly closed the distance between them and got into a boxer's stance, he lashed out with a jab, Arui took a step back, he came in with a hook, and Arui sidestepped, the villain clearly had experience in hand-to-hand -hand combat, Sato fainted, throwing a jab only to pull it back halfway and send a devastating haymaker at Arui, there was the thud of fist meeting body, but it was Sato that reeled back in pain. Shit, Sato cursed, which was Unasu Al for the team, what the hell? It feels like I punched solid steel. No, you punched cloth, Arui smirked as he landed a sidekick into Sato's midsection sending the yellow clad hero student stumbling backwards, here's the thing kid, quirks are bullshit. Never assume anything until you see it. With that he swung his arm in a wide arc, Sato, confused by the amateurish move after being on the receiving end of well-trained strikes from Arui, raised his arm to Guard. Arg, Sato yelled in pain as he clenched his arm which was bleeding from the laceration it had just received, what the hell? He jumped back to make distance as he tried to reassess his opponent, what the hell did he do? Did he have a blade hidden up his sleeve or something? Yeah, this isn't going to be nearly as much fun as I thought, Arui sighed, looking bored as he walked towards the injured student, you're nothing but dumb muscle, another meathead hero that thinks brute force solves everything, what a disappointment. What the hell is he doing? Sato thought as he racked his brain trying to put the pieces together and figure out his opponent's quirk, he looked over Arui as the villain approached him, 
He noticed the sleeve of Arui's hoodie had moved down and covered his left hand, the cuff of the sleeve seemed to have some red on it, wait, that's the hand he cut me with. Sato realized and he thought he might know what his opponent's quirk might be. Cloth manipulation, Sato yelled and Arui stopped mid-step to blink. Not exactly, Arui chuckled after he understood why the teen had yelled, but you're close. He shook his right hand and the sleeve covered it, with both hands covered he launched himself at Sato and started swiping at the teen, Sato noticed the small cuts he was getting, since he couldn't accurately gauge the reach of his opponent. He's doing something to the cloth, making it sharp. No, he hit me twice with blows that felt like getting hit with a metal bat. What kind of quirk is this? Sato continued backing away and sidestepping to avoid the blade-like sleeves of Arui. That's when it hit him. Blade-like, but a moment ago they'd just been normal. His whole body covered except for his eyes, Sato put the pieces together and his eyes widened as he barely dodged a spear hand that was as sharp as an Actu Al spear. He dipped into Arui's GU art and shoved with all his increased strength, he felt the cloth of the hoodie through his gloves and noticed it seemed stiff, not hard like armor, just stiff, Arui blinked as he stumbled backwards from the shove, not expecting the move. You're changing the cloth's properties, that's your quirk, you can make cloth as hard as steel or as sharp as a blade, Sato stated as he stood back to his full height. Do you want a cookie for that? Arui chuckled at the teen, took you long enough, but at least you worked it out. Maybe you aren't just a meathead after all. My quirk is called, alter cloth, as long as it's made of cloth, be it organic or synthetic, I can alter its properties however I wish, the only stipulation is that I have to be wearing it. My classmate would love to examine your quirk, dude, Sato replied as he subtly reached for his belt with his left hand. Got a quirk nerd for a classmate, huh? Arui chuckled as he sharpened the cuffs of his hoodie again, too bad for him, I don't plan to give him the chance, Sato snatched the container he needed from his belt and popped the cap off as he raised it to his mouth, Arui, not knowing what he was doing, but also not wanting him to do it, rushed Sato with his sharp cuffs ready to slice the team. Agish, Sato screamed as his body bulked up more, Arui struck the bulked up student but blinked in shock when his sharpened cloth bounced off Sato's body, only cutting the yellow costume a bit. The fuck, Arui wondered before a fist to the face sent him backwards across the ground. As his head rang from the blow, Arui glanced at his opponent. Whatever he took, it's causing havoc inside him, the villain noted as Sato was breathing heavily, like he was having some kind of respiratory fit. Then Sato blurred forward and it was all Arui could do to block the kick, he went bouncing along the ground cursing a bit as he rolled back to his feet and lashed out with his cloth blades, Sato brushed them aside as if they were still just cloth. It was only his costume being destroyed bit by bit due to the slashes, what kind of bullshit did you pull? Yua, Sato didn't respond with words, he struck at Arui again and again, beating down the cloth quirk user as if he were wailing on a punching bag. Arui skipped backwards to try and make distance, Sato followed him like white on rice. What the fuck, I can't shake him, stronger, faster, uncuttable. What the fuck did he take, trigger? Arui pivoted on his left foot to dodge a haymaker that would have put him out of the fight had it connected, the speed and awkward angle of the move made a sharp pain shoot through his leg, up his spine, and slam into his brain. Fuck, Arui cried out as he hardened his sleeve and the glove he was wearing, then he punched Sato as hard as he could in the face, the teen's head was knocked to the side and Arui panted, Sato turned back to face him, eyes still wild and dull, like a mindless beast that was lashing out. The only difference was now he had a bloody nose, shit, Arui got out before a barrage of fists were slammed into him over and over again, a short time later, maybe 30 seconds or so, and Sato stopped. The teen staggered backwards, his body convulsing, from his position on the ground, Arui watched on as Sato reacted to whatever he'd done to himself, the teen grabbed his stomach and hit his knees, with a few grunts Sato vomited all over the ground, the yellow clad teen fell to the side and lay there. Gasping for air and shaking like he'd just had a seizure, Arui took stock of his own injuries as he lay there on the ground. Pretty sure my right shoulder is dislocated, Arui noted as he tried to keep the fog in his head from claiming his consciousness. Left arm is definitely broken somewhere in the forearm, ribs are all bruised to hell, it hurts to breathe, I definitely sprained my left ankle back then, I probably have a concussion too, fucking hell, he briefly noticed Sato had stopped having his violent tremors. The teen was shivering like he was cold, but he reached into his belt for something, oh fuck me, is he taking more? Thankfully for Arui, Sato wasn't reaching for more sugar. 
he shakily grasped his bottle of stevia pills, popping it open, he tried to control his shaking, he failed and seven or eight pills spilled out into his hand. Four of those fell to the ground as he tried to get them to his mouth, he managed to swallow three and spit out the final one that wouldn't go down, that had been a long shot to begin with, his body clearly wasn't ready for combo sugar, letting the stevia pills do their work to lower his blood sugar levels, Sato tried to breathe evenly, every part of his body hurt, his muscles ached, his head felt like someone had driven a spike into it, even his insides felt like they'd been set on fire. But his idea had technically worked, combining granulated, sanding, and turbinado sugars together had made him damn near unstoppable. By increasing his strength, speed, and durability all at once, he almost felt like a miniature All Might. Well, except for this horrible kickback from his body clearly not being ready for such things, at any rate. Why, Sato muttered out to his beaten opponent, trying to focus on something other than the pain he was feeling, why did someone like you, with such a useful quirk, become a villain? Shut up, and let me pass out in peace, kid, Arui mumbled back. It doesn't make sense though, Sato felt another tremor rack his body. How could I ever, support a system, Arui breathed heavily and groaned from the pain, that tells me, I can't use, a part of my own physiology. They might as well, ask me not to, use my brain. Oh, a quirk freedom follower, that makes more sense, Sato shivered from his overload. Quirk laws are bullshit, kid, Arui exhaled slowly, this system is going to collapse one day, you can count on it, I'd just rather it not be a total collapse as all, Arui's eyes closed and his breathing evened out as he lost consciousness. Sato began to fade in and out without anything other than his condition to focus on, he could only hope Aoyama was okay, and that the rest of his classmates weren't fighting anyone as strong as these two guys seemed to be. End chapter. Damn, the USJ has gone differently too. Did Izuku just steal a copy of the quirk we think he did? Can Kami save 13 and protect her until backup arrives? How fast can he eat or run a top gear? Sato just went mini all might. Just because you have a new idea for your quirk, doesn't mean it's a good one. It worked, mostly, but being mini might without the cognitive function to back it up is a danger to both yourself and others. Unfortunately, Sato learned the hard way that his body simply isn't ready for his, combo sugar, yet, horrible pain, fits, and bodily rejection awaits him for tripling up his own quirk like that. What happened to Aoyama and Sento? Keep reading to find out. So that's the end of the video, if you liked the video, then be sure to samurai slice that like button, and if you like the content I make, then samurai slice that subscribe button, and if you want me to read a fanfiction, then leave the name of the fanfiction, link to the fanfiction, and a description of the fanfiction or what the fanfiction is about in the comments, and until next time,